Hello everyone, welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast. And this week, we have the live letter 25 to discuss with all the details about patch 3.1. Well, not all of them, we still got... Yeah, whoa, you're getting... You're already excited. So I don't even want to wait for his introduction. He's just like, woohoo! It has been a pretty long wait, so it's nice yeah. to finally have some more solid information on 3.1, including the release date. But before we get into that, I am one of your hosts, Michael Mr. Happy Pulveromo, and joining me, of course, is Sly, aka Sly the Fox, aka Sly, aka Gray Fox, aka you, my boy, Blue. How you doing this week, Sly? I'm I'm kind of shocked that you didn't throw like a dance nickname. You know what's there. funny? I I when I, I you I, were I, thinking about I it. I paused right there and I was like, I have one. It's ready to go. I'll go easy on him this week. I'll, I'll give Sly a break after the end of last week's episode. Thank you. I figured, I figured you, earn, you earned it. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I don't know what you did to earn it, but I think other than just taking the reaming that was the end of last... I think that was all you did. You just took the reaming. Yeah. It's okay. Well, uh, look, well, I don't have any reamings planned this week, and I don't and hopefully Mel doesn't either. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Mel will come in. Wait. Wait. And then here you go, some random vine that Sly recorded will be on the episode again. We had the live letter 25 two days ago. Yes, we did. Bright and early. Very bright and early. 6.30 a.m. Eastern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sleep schedule not doing so good. It was over three hours, almost three hours long. And yeah, that was almost like the the live letter in France. Yeah, it was it was massive in terms of just how for, much they talked about. Just for a patch, not just a not just a collective expansion, just for a patch. I think it was kind of needed though with the extra time people have been waiting. They probably said we should we should probably take as much time doing this as possible. We had a lot of questions and I believe they answered all of them. Well, most of them. Oh, yeah, I was going to say not all of them. Most of them. In fact, they even gave us more questions, but we'll be talking about that later in the show as I'm sure that topic everyone's already looking forward to is going to be a hot topic until a future patch actually hits so uh let's get into some of the basics we got a release date yes we did what is it sly tell me Same fucking day is all out for yeah what what else is it is it the release hey. date is it the release date we predicted yeah yeah okay yeah pretty much same day as starcraft 2 expansion fallout 4 and the day before day before the final patch for Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, see, I think that was good. Like, good of them in the 18th floor to kind of push it back a day before. I think you don't call them the 14th development team. You've, ever since the New Year's event, you just say them on the 18th floor. What floor yeah. do you think Final Fantasy XI is on? They just stick them in a closet at this point? <laughs> He said that, not me. Sorry. I don't know. They, I doubt they have their own the whole floor like Final Fantasy XIV does. I mean, they have to have their own floor, dude. Well, it might be a little bit smaller, but now, but yeah. Yeah, now it's definitely a little bit smaller. They've definitely yeah. started renovating that with the last patch being less, well, about two weeks away. Right. Um, but on top of, so on top of it being a really awkward date for <laughs> almost every Everything. gamer... Every gamer in existence finds this to be a really awkward date, even though we've been predicting it. We got a lot of questions answered about some of the content. They said they were mostly going to go over Void Warp. Void Warp, really? Can we? Yo, can that void be? Work. Can, no, can that be the Chocobo version of the Void Arc? It's just a giant Void Chocobo, the Void Warp. <laughs> Please make it happen. Uh, the Void Arc and the exploratory missions. Uh, but we ended up getting a lot more questions answered than that. But still, have questions. But we, yeah, we still have more questions. Still have well, questions. well, hopefully we get prelim patch notes like the Friday or Saturday before. So even though it's two weeks to the day until the patch hits. And then um, they'll do the usual patch reading the day of. I see. I've never once. Because by the time they're doing the patch reading, I'm like, just in case, are the servers up early? Are the servers up early? Are the servers but, <laughs> let's be honest. Most of us aren't even going to be thinking about that because, okay, one, there's going to be maintenance. There, there's going to be maintenance on that day. No, yeah. like. 
when it hits. So nine out of ten, a lot of people are going to try to get some Fallout Four time in before. Some, but not some. a lot. Not like. a lot. <laughs> you're not going to get a lot of Fallout. Like as soon as you know it, like you're going to get messages. The the patches up, patches Shit. up. Shit. Patches up. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Yeah, I know we need to do Knights <laughs> of the Round. I know. Just shut up. Let me finish this mission real quick first. I need to I need to finish raiding the supermarket, please. Yes. Okay. Um, but like you said, we so let, let's let's go over a good portion of the things. If we don't get anything covered this week and the show like goes ridiculous length. We'll get we'll, to it next week. We'll get to it next week, because next week we still have some more stuff to talk about. Uh next week will be the week before three point one and the following episode on the tenth itself. We'll, we'll have a day's worth of experience with the patch to kind of talk about that. Right. So, uh, first up, basic stuff. You know, we know what we're getting. We're getting new main scenario quests, new daily quests, Void Arc, exploratory missions, Knights of the Round Extreme, even though they didn't tell us that officially until now. The new dungeons and a bunch of uh, Lords of Verminion and a bunch of new features. Does it, does it sound like your average size patch? The way they're hyping it up to be, it sounds a little bit more than that. I mean, maybe it's just because of the the extended length of wait that we had. But it just seems like a little bit more um, more than usual. Well, I mean, for me, it seems like it's more like it's less... You know how they say, I'll oh, put all your eggs in one basket? It's mm -hmm. like, they, it's like they, they took some eggs out of the basket, but put a couple of bigger eggs in. Yeah, because it doesn't sound like, and even watching the trailer, to, it, looking at what we have, it doesn't actually seem like a huge, huge patch, but more like a uh, a ground breaking patch in terms of the cycle. We're not this. This isn't one of those patches where we just get the same thing over and no. over again. No, I can agree with that. Yeah, they're just trying to this. This is the patch where Square Enix says we don't need to follow that formula. We like the formula, but we want to add to it and make changes to it. I think but they're still gonna go back to the. They're always going to have the two dungeons, oh, the alternating far. raids. Like, that's yeah. always going to be there. It's just interesting to see, as we're going to talk about the exploratory missions a bit more, how that vision has kind of evolved and where it hopefully leads in a positive direction in the future for 14. We've yet to see their first venture into uncharted territory outside of that formula, but hopefully it's a good venture. I think it'll be. I think it'll be a good venture. So uh, we got a trailer. Out of this, I'm mm -hmm. sure most people here have seen the trailer. If not, I don't know what you're doing. Go pause this, go watch it, and then come back. Some pretty interesting things happen. Uh, we're gonna go through the contents that are spoke about in the tra uh, spoken about in the trailer, and we're gonna probably cover a few things that are in the trailer that even I kind of didn't pay too much attention to until today. Mm -hmm. So, new main scenario quests. We have confirmed that is indeed Krill, or as they call their Kururu. Yeah. So. If we get X death, I swear to God, I'm going to give up so much faith. I'm just going to say I was right. I'm just going to say I was right. Eventually, in a later patch, if we get X death, I'm I'm still I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put that on my little dry erase board. X death. Just, what, what dry erase board? Where? I, I have a dry erase board in in my man cave. That's actually not a bad idea. It's a pretty See? good thing to have. See? Um, but there's that's not the only thing. So we've been talking a lot about the Warrior of Darkness, who, by the way, uh, solos Ravana in the trailer. Pretty he bre he breaks his parry attack with Steel Cyclone. That's always a good thing to see. The more interesting so, well, thing. The so Warriors, you hear that? I want to see. I want to see some solo runs. In other words, they're buffing Warriors in 3.1. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Basically. Um, but what's more interesting is that even though when 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 the Warrior of Darkness was introduced to us, he was introduced as you and yours are now to join the fray meaning him and his company there are other warriors of there are other warriors of darkness shown in the trailer a paladin of darkness and a bard of darkness the, the placeholder the placeholder characters we've seen in trailers yes yeah. uh, uh, that leads us to believe that when we spoke about that flashback sequence with the warrior what looked like the warrior of light in the uh in, i believe it was last week or the week before um last week it was that actually is almost definitely the warrior of darkness with the paladin and the bard behind them yep what this gets me excited for is the idea of sort of like an eight versus eight trial against them. Not in 3.1, but sometime later on. Wolves then. <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we'll do the whole wolves then. We'll, we'll do wolves then. PVP me, bro. Yep. The party of darkness. Yeah, pretty Skewer. much. Skewer. It, it, I, it's, it's pretty exciting because some of my favorite fights in games are ones like uh, Knights of the Round and um, 
And even the the last boss of Hollow Tally Hard Mode is kind of I like to see those those kinds of bosses with lots of different enemies that you take on it unconventionally. Seems like those fights are so simple. It seems like they're simple. That's because than... Square Enix has never given us a good a hard fight. They've literally never given us a full on council fight, as they're called. Right. Where the bosses are all of equivalent strength. Usually, those kind of fights require crowd control, like you know, for example, Black Mage sleeping a certain ad or. Uh, things along those lines. I'd like to see that happen here. But if you're really going to look at it that way, then it, it's going to be exactly like PvP. We're going to all be on equal terms. We're going against the healer. <laughs> Get the healer. <laughs> Get the healer first. Get the healer first. Everybody else, everybody else is secondary. Get the healer first. Take the node. Guard the node. Yeah, and just to be clear, a council <laughs> fight isn't like what A2 and turn 4 are. A council fight is literally here are these bosses. They're all at. They're all against you at the same time. Huh? And your goal is to control them and take them out in a certain order. Generally, council fights sort of mimic player actions. Like, you'll usually see things like, you know, that players themselves can use. It generally represents the classes in the game. I'm hoping that this eventually leads to that 8v8 brawl that we're expecting. I would love to have an 8v8 brawl against the board. So, we're, so we're going to see some triple fell cleaves? Oh, that guy's gonna fell cleave the shit out of everyone. If he's smart, he'll AOE <laughs> us. If he's smart, he'll AOE us with decimate. But I don't know that he's that smart, so we'll see. Right, we'll see. Yeah. This is the AI we're talking about. And on top of that, some pretty dark things happen. In that. Like we see Amrick stabbed. Wait, or wait, 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 wait. Pretty it's in dark? the it's in the pretty, trailer. Pretty dark or pretty dank. Both. Okay. Yeah, we see Amrick stabbed. Yeah. Which is rough. That's probably. He is and the we, new leader of Ishgard, so it's pretty... We just lost Hoshifon. We're we really going to lose another Ishgardian. It looks like we're going to get a shield, though, from the trailer. What is up with people giving us their shields? Is they that... like us. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing of respect. And it's his own brother giving it to us. <laughs> so it pretty much has to be a thing. Um, that's another thing. So... It's brought up in the chat. Do you think the Warrior of Darkness himself is going to mimic our character's appearance? And the only reason he appears as Derplander in the trailer because Derplander's a dragoon now, so he's the opposite of him. I still think they'll have the placeholder kind of appearance. Derplander? You think Derplander. it's going to be Derplander regardless? They, they wouldn't. They wouldn't put that in the trailer for no reason. Now, I mean, because we don't have. I mean, now in the trailers. We're we're seeing you know cutscenes and things like that. Um, we always saw Dirk Lander in the past trailers, um, not in the actual cutscenes, just him in you know battle. Now he's actually in cutscenes. There's a reason he's in cutter. He's in cutscenes. There's a reason the Paladin, the Bard, are there. They're there for a purpose. We're going to have to deal with that. I guess if they were going to mimic our character, they would have done it sooner. With the kind of uh, the kinda like the, so you thinking it's it's kind of like um, the one Dark Knight. Yeah, quest? that's another thing. A lot of people said it would too much mimic the Dark Knight quest, where you had to literally yeah fight, fight yourself. Yeah, your the darkness in your heart or some shit like some Kingdom Hearts Disney shit that they came up with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom <laughs> Hearts two point eight three seven five. <laughs> Can we get Kingdom Hearts Pi, please? <laughs> One point three one four. I need it. All right. So main story that we could. There's a lot of things going on there. Nidhog. They they showed. They literally showed every single antagonist other than the Asians. But Nidhog the of darkness with both eyes. With both eyes, looking very happy to be back. He looked very pleased with himself. He's like, yeah, that's right. Both I'm eyes, back. bitch. I'm back. I'm back, bitches. <laughs> uh, so we also have new daily quests for the Vanu Vanu. This is, let's be honest. Yay. There you go. Oh, look, Sly knows it. Look at that. There we go. You gotta, and then you gotta end with the fist bump, and then the <laughs> final one. There you go. Uh, now, so these Beast Tribe quests are Beast Tribe quests. You know, the dance is a reward, the Sano amount is a reward, whatever. Yeah. I'm more interested in this new system, the dynamic leveling system that they added to it. Yeah. Where... As you as you're a higher level, the quest that the quest mobs will will level with you, almost like a leave quest, you know, that you activate at the same level. It's going to be a decent means of speeding up the 50 to 60 exp rate. I kind of want them to go back and do this to all the beast tribe quests. I want it so bad. So, Ixalis? 
booster booster crafters. I mean, yeah, if it's if they're gonna, if they can find a way to scale it properly, because they already they already nerfed the Ixal quests yeah, like, they for did. leveling crafting. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I think it would definitely revitalize some of the old ones, give people more incentive to do them a bit more. Um, people still do them as they're leveling their first character, but most people are steered away from that because the main story buff. It's really 50 to 60 people want to get through faster, and you won't do them for that. So, I'm happy for it. I'll be doing them regardless. I still need to finish the Ixal because I don't have the Allied Beast Tribe quest thing done. I was like, I'm like five ranks away from I've been them. lazy on my Ixal quest. I've been really lazy. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm just glad. I want to see this. I'm expecting this will be the new standard for daily quests. To make them more pr attractive to people while they're leveling up. Yeah. Um, and while you're leveling up alternates as well. So you feel like you can kill two birds with one stone. I'm happy. I'm, c I'm content with this. Yeah. Next thing on the list. And for anyone who wants to read along this. If you have the trans the unofficial translation handy. That's what we're going off of. For, we have the show. We, you guys literally have the show notes yourself. Because that's just what we're doing. <laughs> that's just how we're doing it today. Uh, so the next thing is Ravana Extreme. So we knew Bismarck and Ravana hitting the duty finder. In 3.1. Finally! Yeah, I, I honestly, with Alexander Normal being in there, like, I understand that Alexander Normal is easier than those on most people's opinion. Mm -hmm. But even still, the fact that that was in the Duty Finder and this isn't, it's kind of annoying. Yeah. The more important thing is changes to the extreme uh, primals. The, t how you unlock them. You don't need to do Bismarck anymore to get to Ravana. That's not even the interesting part. It's, you won't even need to do Ravana to get to the one after. Whether that be Thordon, because that's Minstrel's Ballad. I don't know if you'll need Ravana for that. Um, but it seems like they're moving away from locking Extreme Primals behind previous tier Extreme Primals. Which, to me, is strange and I agree. good at the same time. Well, I think it's strange. Good, I don't know about. Because, it, well, let's be honest. Um, the Extreme Primals in 2.0... In terms of difficulty scale, let's admit, they were kind of out of order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were kind of out of order. Uh, you... Sheba and Leviathan were two of the easiest ones. And they were, I mean, they came late. But that's kind of a stigma people have where they think that the next one always has to be harder. It's just that one that was harder could block you off from one that was easier. So let's go back. What did we start out with? Garuda EX and then Titan EX. And then you get the Ifrit. I'm like. Yeah, the fuck? if it was pretty easy. By <laughs> the actual fuck. If it was pretty easy. By yeah, it was a big letdown for me. I was like, I did all that shit just to get to this. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Leviathan was even easier. And then Ramu. Ramu was a big stop for a lot of people getting to Shiva. Oh, yeah. Just. Oh, yeah. And then, I don't know. I, I always thought that was one of the easiest of the fights. It was my favorite fight of them all. Uh, and then at some get point. to Shiva in, in comparison to Ramu. It's a little it's, less. Yeah, it's a little less difficult. So this is gonna got a this is kind of going to break that uh, that inconsistency because if one is harder, it's not gonna stop you. But at the same time, I always kind of like the idea of earning the unlocks as you go. I actually really yeah. like the way that they had Coil One locked behind um, Titan Hard Mode. It right. was like it was like this game's versions of attunements without doing the long and stupid stuff. You were literally just stepping up and it's like, can you beat this? Okay, then you deserve to do this fight. Can you beat this fight? Okay, then you deserve to do this fight. I can understand that this isn't exactly the same. It doesn't work that way because of the way the difficulty scaling is, but I'm going to miss it to some degree. And also I enjoyed helping people get the clears to get up to the next one. That's not going to be needed as much. They'll just need the most recent clear pretty much. It also invalidates the older primals a lot faster outside of pony farming. But what I, what I really don't like about this and some people will hate me, that's fine. Um, you, right now, as it stands, we have people, you know, people who are in Savage, yet they, they tell me, I still haven't got my Bismarck clear. I'm like, say what now? <laughs> yeah, because they just jumped right to SO weapons. Yeah, they jump right, I mean, you make the jump, but you're missing out on, well, it's not that you're missing out on the content, well, you are, because if you haven't done Bismarck, you haven't done Ravana. But, yeah, it gives you an excuse to skip content, and that, to me, I, I just don't know about. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I'm with you on that one. Like, it, it's, got its, it's got its merits, and it's got its demerits. I, I think that could, you could say that about anything. Mm -hmm. This in particular, though, I'm hoping it doesn't lead to people not being adequately prepared for content uh, because they could just skip that step. You know what I mean? 
Right. Granted, the people who don't care about being prepared for content generally don't give a shit anyway, so yeah, it doesn't regardless. matter. Regardless, yeah. <laughs> this one, this next one was pretty funny. I was salty about this. I'm not going to lie. Quests required to obtain ether currents will be changed. They're moving all of the ones that were deep in those side quest chains mm -hmm. to the front of the side quest chain. Now, will they be in the front, like, all together? You just knock those out, and then you have your quest currents? If it was previously part of a long quest chain, and it was, and it was anywhere but the first quest, it's being moved to the first quest. So, those, if I don't remember how many Moogle quests you had to do to get some of the ether currents, but that's a solid example. <laughs> you don't remember? Really? I blacked most of that out of my memory. Really? I was like, nope, that's it. Just pfft, erase it. I don't, I, nope, done. Don't care. Hate it. Moving into main story quest. Regard okay, so moving into main story quest is the other translation that we seem to be getting from the chat. Mm -hmm. Either way, it still holds the same. You know, that almost seems like a preparation for something later. Also, I'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Regardless, side quests are kind of not a thing anymore. <laughs> Along with some of the buffs they're giving us in uh, to like exping from fifty to sixty. There'll be a thing in the next expansion. Don't. I am not fucking. Don't get it this. twisted. I am don't not get fucking it touching them. Nope. Mm -mm. Come on. Come on. Nope. It's I, mean, I don't want to do. Nope. I. They. There's Moogles in the next expansion. I'm writing an angry letter to Square Enix. And if there's Ether currents locked behind those quests, that angry letter is going to be much angrier. Let their Paisa. Uh, <laughs> okay, the Paisa I don't mind, but that's fine. Paisa instead of Moogles. Yeah, if I have Paisa quests, it might just haunt my dreams, but I don't mind that so much. All right. Uh, so then what else do we have? We have uh, system messages not going to be displayed during cutscenes. Thank God. Cool. Thank Zodi God. Zodiac weapon nerfs to the quest line again in 3.1. <laughs> Yay. Who, who, who's actually going to go back and do this? There's a lot of people point. that are still doing them. And I get that. I, I hear that almost every other week. Got... My, my, got my, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> why are you doing this? Why are you doing I mean, Glamour, good, but really? But Zeta, bad. Glamour, good. Zeta, bad. <laughs> well, okay, so it's mostly the lights in the Zodiac. So the lights are being doubled again. I'm assuming doubled. They say increased. Um, I think that puts it at, like, 32 lights per bright, which, you, which was originally worth four, mind right. you. <laughs> Uh, the, the dungeon atmas for the Zodiac portion, those are 100% drop rate. Literally said it on the slide, 100%. Uh -huh. And you can undersize parties for lights now, which is probably the biggest buff. Because you used to, like, if you were level 60, you'd still have to sink down to 50 to, like, farm Garuda for lights. Now you could just bring a friend and do it at level 60. Do it for, like, two minutes and then come back in and keep doing it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And then... The one we've been waiting for. Anima weapons. That's the new relic. Anima weapons. Didn't we have to... We had animus. Now these are anima. 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 And now everyone's immediately like, Anima? Final Fantasy X? Going to be here? We're going to have to do that? Is that going to be one of the steps? Do we have to beat Anima? <laughs> or it's just everyone immediately, like, brain turns off. Like, oh, not relic. <laughs> Don't give a shit anymore. Anima. That's all I care about. A little sidebar, do you think? We've talked about this before, but one do you day. think they're foreshadowing something? With one this? day we'll see Anima. I have no doubt that one day we'll see Anima. I don't think it has anything to do with these weapons, though. Okay. That's my thing. Okay. And you know what's they're funny? Separate. We're talking about the Zodiac weapon and how, like, why are people doing them? One of the reasons is that, like, that benefit you'll get to the new weapon quest line. How big is that benefit? Not that big, because Yoshi P himself said don't do don't do it for that reason. You're be you're better <laughs> off Yoshi just P doing it. Yoshi P says don't do it. Why the fuck are y'all going back? Because okay to fucking Zeta. Because here's the thing, I think it makes more sense don't do it in 3.15 to get an advantage. Because if you're doing it now, I mean what are you losing? You know, you're you're playing the game. I mean that's what they want out of you, right? You okay. just I, I think it just means when it comes out don't bother. Like, just go straight into the animal weapon. You're wasting your time if you try to go back and finish the Zeta to get an advantage. It's way more effort. And probably way more kill. But how many people do you think will still actually... People still want it for glamour. Because glamour is the true endgame. It is. Final, fa Final Fashion 14. Or Fashion Fantasy 14. Or Final Fantasy 14 Fashion Word. Or Glamour Word. There we go. 
So and it's all and that 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 bonus is only going to help you with the first step. And he literally said the first step's not that bad. Then again, I think he said that about Atmos. Too. So why? Why? People want to do it. If they, people want to, that's, that's how people want to enjoy the game. I mean, all, yeah, all I, I get that. I get that. I, they're insane. I'm, I'm, they're... I'm, the hu I'm the biggest advocate for that. You know me. But I don't. Let, I'm, I ain't going to stop them. If somebody asks me, is it worth? I'm going to say no. <laughs> but if somebody says, oh, I just finished it, I'll be like, you're crazy. Congrats. So that would be for me. Good job. And more importantly, a lot of people were worried that like that would mean the new the Dark Knight Astro and Machinist weapons would have mm -hmm. no advantage. Like you couldn't get an advantage because no Zeta existed for those. But the Zeta the Zeta advantage isn't job specific. As long as you have a Zeta done, your first step is going to be shorter. Yeah. Whether we whether that's per weapon that you already have, or if that's like permanently like you own a Zeta, it's quicker. We don't know yet. So yeah, if you have something like a Black Mage Zeta, you can still get that Dark Knight or Astrologian or Machinist advantage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In so. case you've switched mains or, or edited. Even, even if you wanted to use it on a different, other different job. Like, so a lot of people don't like the new play style for Bard, so maybe they switch to something else, but they had their Zeta. You know, that works for them as well. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they switch to uh, Monk or something. But we don't know anything about the quest line. It's, the quest line is still going to be a... Is, I don't know why people don't think it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a grind. <laughs> How can you not expect it to be a grind? People, it's it's wishful thinking. I think, like I hope it's just like the first relic quest where we just have to beat a bunch of fights and I can do all nine of them in a day. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, unfortunately. But the biggest thing is that it's not in three point one. It's it's actually not gonna be till three point one five. This anima weapon, so that kind of changes my prediction on item level. I think it's gonna be two ten right off the bat now. What have I been saying? Okay, but see, if it came out in three point one, what have I, I been saying? If it, if it came out in three point one, I wouldn't have guessed that. But now that it's halfway through the patch cycle, unless they're going to do it in three point one eight, which would be really weird, it's it's going to be. It's I'm completely willing to think it's two ten, like directly, like right out of the box, two ten. Said two ten from the gate. Yeah, but you didn't know this. This see, this is this is this a doesn't change things this is, for me. It's this still is, gonna be two ten. This is a technicality that worked in your favor, and I don't think had it been had it made it to three point one, that would have been the case. Sure. I'm just I'm just saying, RNG rolled in your favor. All right, it could have rolled in mine as well. All right, next we have exploratory missions. Yes, these are probably the second most talked about thing from the live letter. Hmm. And it's for good reason. We, they answered the remaining questions that I had at the very least uh, regarding that, um, regarding what you know, why, what, what bonus will free companies get versus mercenaries or people who do it with random others? Uh, you know, what the loot's going to be like, what we can kind of uh, expect uh, item wise and uh, size of the map wise. All that stuff got uh, got answered pretty much. Yeah. And the ether currents part, which as you remember, I'm not a fan of. But it's here, so whatever. So, the most interesting thing to me is that there's three difficulties. Easy, normal, hard. Thank God they didn't go normal, hard, extreme, or I would have punched someone in the face. <laughs> the, oh. Now they, they finally got the naming conventions right. Easy, normal, hard. I still would have liked an extreme. No! What the... No! <laughs> it's so Why? weird. Normal, hard. That's like, that's like when you play the... For some reason, that reminds me of Final Fantasy 2. I beat Final Fantasy 2 for the first time, mm -hmm. and at the very end screen, it goes, Congratulations, you beat easy mode. And I was like, what the fuck was, do you mean I beat easy mode? That, there's a normal? It went from easy to normal. The game didn't even have a normal option. That shit doesn't make sense. Normal should be the normal difficulty. But this has easy, normal, hard, and you'll be, you're able to choose between them. However. Well, well, you say choice. Choice, somewhat. Somewhat kind of choice do we really have though well your choice in difficulty is based on your airship level so if you if you really haven't been doing anything with your airship this guy you're probably going to get stuck on easy which is equi um, equivalent to level 10 uh, normal is equivalent to level 25, and hard is equivalent to level 50. So, I, 
How are, your, how are your airships? Th- tell me, tell me, Sly. What level are you, all of your airships? <laughs> tell me. <laughs> all. All of them. What? What? All what, what, one of na- them. All one of them. Name me exactly how how much you're prepared for this. Seventeen or eighteen. Seventeen or eighteen. One airship that's level eighteen. Man, you're gonna love easy mode. I'm, I'm gonna be hitching a fucking ride on somebody's airship. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, go get someone from your free company to go. What are you doing? If you're on Slice Free Company, go level that shit right now. Go send that shit out on a voyage. I gotta get permissions. Uh, <laughs> you better go give him permission right now. I don't care. It's the one time I'm not in game while the show is going. You've made a mistake today, Sly. I have. You have. Fuck me. Yeah, I'd rather not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, so. The more interesting thing is not only that your airship level, because people are, you know, this has always been tied to free companies. People wonder if you're not in a free company, what's going to happen. Uh, to be clear, easy and normal are accessible uh, via an airship in Ishgard. You can do it with a free company, but if you don't have a free company or an airship, you can get a group of eight people together, go get on an airship, and still fly out to one of these islands. But why wouldn't they make hard available as well? Uh, because hard is supposed to be hard, apparently. Apparently hard is, you know, the name is, uh, the namesake is take, to be taken more literally than against, like, Ifrit and Ravana and whatnot. So why can't we, quote, unquote, DF hard? Because in a way, that's what you're doing when you're going to Ishgar. You're DFing an airship venture. Uh, because only free companies can do it. Bottom line. Only free companies with level 50 airships can access hard mode. Maybe Ishgard's airships just suck, and that's why they can't go. <laughs> Do you think they'll eventually change this to where yeah. they'll add hard? So what I think is going to happen, um, the map they showed us was called the Diadem. Yes. And apparently it is the only map. It is the only zone for exploratory missions currently. Um, the fact that they gave it a name leads me to believe that in 3.3 and 3.5, we're going to see new exploratory mission zones with updated item level drops. That's what I'm assuming. It'll go like up to 230 and then up to 250. What? I'm sorry, that's guessing item level in the future, but you get what I mean. Um, which means he's going to be wrong. Yeah, which means it's going to be right. Anyway, um, so what I'm expecting is that uh, when the 3.3 <sighs> one comes out, hard mode's going to be unlocked in Ishgard, and then mm-hmm. easy normal for the next one will be unlocked in Ishgard. Uh, at that point, because 210 locking it behind the free company stuff is uh, it's kind of meaningless when 230 gear, 220 and 230 gear is available. Yeah. Uh, but the, I know a lot of people are now concerned, oh, I can't do this if I'm not in a free company. There are means to join it, even if you aren't in a free company. If you, you As long as one person, one or two people, are hosting the free company airship, like they're like, okay, I'm sending our airship out. You, they can invite like as many other people as they want to come join. So uh, even if you don't have it, be on the lookout for groups looking for hard mode in like the party finder and stuff. Because they may be, there may be people looking, get your name out there, you know, looking to do hard mode with whatever free company, you know, I have this job, item level this, whatever. So you can essentially, and I hate that I'm about to do this joke, you can catch a rat! Sorry. Sorry. Is that a joke or was that just embarrassing? I can't decide. Both. Sorry. Rest in peace, Scooter. Yeah, rest in peace, your just integrity, because that's not... I don't even have to find another Vine of you. You're going you're gonna to take care of yourself. As far as I'm concerned. Um, okay, so only free companies can access level 50. Level 50, obviously, uh, hard mode only has 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 the best chance of dropping loot. Um, Ishgard parties can go as uh, 1 to 8. Obviously, if you have three level 50 airships as a free company, which Sly will never know what that's like, um, you, <laughs> you can bring a total of 24 people. Each airship can host up to 8 people. And if you have three level 50 airships, you can depart all at the same time as a 24-man alliance. Similar to queuing into, like... I don't know, Void Arc as a pre-made 24, I guess. Um, but what's interesting to me is how they're handling instancing here. You remember when Heaven's Word launched and we had instances, right? That bullshit. That bullshit. It's, it's kind of like that without the choice. Every time... So, basically... Wait, 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 we had choice? Well, I mean, you could leave the zone and go into another one. Like, it would prop you, it would plop you in one, but then if you went to the, the zone borders, you could choose... It was annoying, but it was a choice. It was annoying. Other than the I, 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 didn't, I, I felt that I didn't have a choice, but go on. Okay. Um, you can actually... Uh, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so each, each island is going to have an instance of up to nine full parties. So three alliances or three free companies. 
And then after that, a new one is made, and any excess are sent to the next one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then as it they just become free, keeps repeating. Just keeps Thanks. repeating. They haven't given us any sort of no, uh, any sort of incl inclination, or that's not the right word. Whatever, I don't give a shit. Um, inclination. I said inclination, like climate. Uh, that there's going to be a limit to how many instances there are. We've yet to hear anything along those lines. I'm assuming that they have plenty of instances available. What? You look like you've got something to say right now. I'm, I kind of feel like, okay, in terms, they talk, we saw the scale of, of this place. It, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Do you think they'll remove the instances and. I think it's. I don't think it's because we're, they're worried about the areas becoming, you know, not being, not being able to. I don't think it's not because they don't want the areas. They don't think the areas can handle it. I think they, they want to make sure that the amount of enemies available is sufficient for the amount of players allowed in the zone. They they probably feel if they just let it go wild, that it's gonna you're gonna have 500 people in the zone and claiming enemies is gonna be ridiculously annoying. It's gonna be like that the first the first day. The first but it's but it's still only seventy two people even on the first day. I mean, still, but still, it like to me this this is really gonna feel like hunts again. The first the, the the first fucking day it's gonna feel like hunts. We're gonna be we're gonna be going after pretty much the same thing, like and pretty much just all fair game. Everything's fair game. Um, whoever does the most damage will reap the rewards. I mean. It, it's scaled on it. What you get is based on what damage you do. So you can't flash like 40 times and expect to get like the best thing. We're looking you. at you paladins leveling in fates right now. That doesn't yeah. work here. Doesn't work. So it, and it's not like hunts where, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm going to get there in the last second. And just fucking dragon fire dive. That's it. I still get I still get the, seals. No. I, I don't expect these enemies to die so quickly that that's an issue, though. With only 72 people in the zone, it's not like you're going to be waiting. Like, people are going to be like, wait for me. I'm almost there. And then you're going to have those people no matter what. But, they're like, fuck you. I didn't make it. But here, here, okay. We're going to talk about what we saw in the video. But I'm just going to go ahead and just say, from what I saw, you you called it God mode. Like, like that what was they pretty were, funny. It, you called it God mode because they were just going through that shit with four people, nonetheless. Was and one shotting people? mobs. Yeah, one they, shotting mobs. Like <laughs> that's not gonna happen. They landed like four attacks and went from full health to zero. It didn't even lose health along the way. It literally just they clicked God mode dead, and they got drops, which was even funnier. <laughs> I don't know why that was just funny to me. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to be like the hunt only because the zone is limited to 72 players. You're not literally going to be sitting there like, you'll know if everyone possible that can be there is there. Are all 72 oh, people Oh, we're going to know here? the first fucking day. We're going <laughs> to know. Everybody's going to be there. Like, don't get it twisted. You will know everybody's there. And it feels, it feels roughly competitive to me. But it's, it, it's, it's going to get competitive. It's not going to be as competitive as you think. The small enemies in the gathering nodes, I think, are going to be competitive. But the big bosses, why wouldn't you just be like, hey, there's six other parties here. And uh, don't get me wrong. There are going to be people who don't give a fuck and they pull it regardless. But, um, Hunts. but here's the thing. There's no, like, everyone showing up, oh, you know, this many people are here, and then someone pulls, and then you always have that one person straggling behind that's like, wait, wait, hold, please, wait. Fuck you guys. Even though they took like six minutes to get there. That won't happen here. When all when all the alliances are there, it's very easy to just press here. Like, ready, 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 ready. Pull. You just have to set it up quick because you do have a time limit with how long you can spend in there. And we don't know respawn times on the enemies. We don't know uh, how many boss mobs there are outside of the one that we saw in the trailer. Which mm -hmm. was a fucking brachiosaur from Final Fantasy VI, by the way. Hopefully there's T-Rexes <laughs> there as well. How did how did a brachiosaur get into this sky island? How did it get... And don't you dare tell me it climbed up by its neck and, like, reached on or something. Why is Littlefoot's mom in friggin' Diadem? The island moved, not the brachiosaur. There you go. But how did? But how's? But the brachiosaur's been living on that island. That can't tell me that brachiosaur's not a little scared. What makes you think a brachiosaur is just going? Yo, you, so you're telling me if a dinosaur was just like, oh shit, I'm being lifted ten thousand feet into the air? No, I'm okay. Cool, I'm I'm good with this. 
It's gonna freak out and just jump off the island. It's gonna lose its shit. It's just gonna be like, <sighs> it's like why, a are we, why are we discussing Jurassic Park? Okay. No, we're discussing we're discussing <laughs> the Land Before Time. I said Littlefoot's mom. I call it Jurassic Park. I wasn't a huge fan of Land Before Time. After the first one, it turned to shit. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, they have a ninety-minute time limit in here. Uh, no, yeah. worth, something worth it. Uh, we, so we, that ad, th so that's what to me adds to the competitiveness of this. You, you have a limited time, while well, ninety minutes doesn't seem limited. Go back to that one issue I had in fucking Circus Tower. Ninety minutes is a long fucking time if you're if you don't want to be there. But it it's gonna go by so quick because oh, yeah. we're gonna like you're gonna stay there. Like most people are gonna stay there the entire ninety minutes, the entire Good. ninety minutes. But what really, but what really gets me? It doesn't really get me, but it's gonna get a lot of people. Then why'd you say it does, Sly? <laughs> it, it gets me somewhat. Okay. That the um, the cooldown. See, this doesn't. See, I, this doesn't get me at all. I have no. No, issue here's with this. what. Here's what gets me. They put the they put the cooldown in. They say if you don't like it, we're going to remove it, which means we're going to remove it. Yeah, they. Like, I, I don't even know why they say if people don't like it. Why people don't like anything? Anything that <laughs> anything you're going to have people complaining. I want to go back in, and half of me is one of those people that really you know once I get out, I want to go back in. I really do want to go back in. So. Um, yeah, at, like, it might not be, it'll be the next probably hot fix patch, maybe, maybe even 3.2, that they're going to remove that. They're, okay, 3.2 I'll remove. give you, I'll give you 3.2, I don't think they're going to remove it before, and you know what the thing is, uh, this, we, this was actually the way, the cooldown doesn't work the way that I initially thought it does, mm -hmm. so you have 90 minutes in there, and then a 30 minute cooldown afterwards, Right. that's not actually how it works. From the second that you enter, you're now on a two-minute cooldown. It just so happens that 90 minutes of those two hours you're going to spend inside of the area. So, so if you leave before, congratulations, if you, you leave, got a longer... If you leave you five know. minutes in, you got you got a, a little bit under two hours to wait, pretty much. And, that, and you can kind of you can kind of chalk that up to a penalty, really. Yeah, if anything, that's like, okay, you just use this then what the fuck of course you can't go back in for this time you just left no. super minute you just l left super early yeah two hour cooldown not two minute cooldown i believe i said two minutes by accident but yeah it's like it's kind of akin to like a penalty when you just leave a duty or yeah a dungeon so yeah i, I kind of get that but yeah the whole 90 it, it, it's the whole 90 minutes you stay the whole 90 minutes it's just 30 minutes if you if you leave sooner than that you know you're gonna have a two hour cooldown basically yeah, I think th I see. I don't think that's as big of a concern as the the loot system in there. At least for people who are doing it via the duty finder, because it, by default the the loot system in there is all greed, which means nobody can need on anything. Mm -mm. You'd have to change it, and only free companies can do that. Well, at least they. they so I think that a pre made of eight can do it because you're a pre made of eight. Mm -hmm. Um, but they, like, they essentially DFing it. Yeah, you're. You're going to get some ninja loot. If you go in with randoms, then, yeah, it's going to be all greed. If you don't make a full, at least one full pre-made party of eight, you're going in for, and it's all greed. Now, at first, that sounds like a good thing because they don't want people constantly changing jobs to try and win loot. Uh, which, I don't see why that's an issue in the first place because they would have to change their loot before the enemy dies. Mm -hmm. And it would have to be on a job they're specifically trying to ninja. And then there's not even a guarantee it would drop for that job. Like, there's, there's so many variables there that that's already kind of strange to me. That that's the thought process. The, the issue with for me is that they have a use for unwanted gear. You can trade it in for points or you can use it to spear bond for a materia. So it doesn't matter if you can't need it because everyone's going to greet everything. <laughs> Similar to kind of like how you do a dungeon right now and kind of mm -hmm. like half the party greets for seals. You know, or the other half doesn't give a shit because we have nothing to do with seals. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't, I don't care. That's <laughs> I don't, I don't roll on shit anymore, so it just doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just, it, those two systems combined seem kind of strange. The fact that you'll want every piece because every piece is, in one way or the other, useful to you, but they put the system in to prevent ninjing. 
yeah, we're going to still get ninja -ing. It's just not going to be one person. The thing is, it's not going to be one person ninja -ing. It's going to be your whole fucking party wants a ninja because they're like, oh, fuck it, it's mine. So basically, a, like, an, a, a kind of DF party, quote unquote, is going to re pretty much fuck themselves over. Like, everybody over. They're going to fuck, fuck each other over, essentially. Yeah, I mean, or, or one person's going to have a lucky streak. They're going to win everything. <laughs> and then the other seven are gonna blacklist them. <laughs> I don't. I a lot get of people it. People are gonna get blacklisted the first fucking day. I can assure you. Well, the, the bigger the <laughs> they're other, gonna get blacklisted the first fucking day. The other concern is that this brings people's desire to use Loot Master up. Loot Master was added 3.0, and I don't know anyone who uses Loot Master. I'm sure it's there, but I don't know anyone who uses it. I've seen all greed, but I haven't seen Loot Master Static. used. Even statics, I don't see, because a static, what are you worried about? Like, you're a static I mean, group. It's, it's, I mean, we're a static group, yes, but it, the only, it, brings, it brings a level of, I guess, control. The to only the group. thing I like about it is that you don't have to worry about the person leaving before they get their loot, because you can hand it to them. Okay, That's the if, only thing you, I like about it. If you don't it. loot master, how long of a discussion are you going to have of who gets what? A minute, most, because you already know what everyone has leveled and what everyone's actively using in the raid. I mean, okay, but with the situation we have now where we've been in, let, I'm going to use Savage as an example. Okay. We've been in Savage for a good fucking while, and a lot of people, like me, in our group, we're stuck on A3. But we've gotten a lot of the stuff we need up to that point. We really don't need anything else. I mean, if anything, we're getting stuff for Fucking other all greed. Do you have the job at 60? Fucking great. It done. You know what we do? We have it in such a way where uh, if we know that, like, because we don't know what the fuck we need anymore. Like, we each know what we as individuals need. But then when something drops, we just go, oh, okay, I have this at 60. I can use it. And bam, we're done. Takes us a minute. The only other thing we do is for, like, coats and twines. We don't need those anymore at this point either. So those just go free roll. We just need if main spec, greed if off spec. That's, that's all we do. And it means we never have an issue. Every week, it's literally just, if you want it, make mention of it before the fight, and then you know that's who's getting it. We ain't talking about that shit before the fight. <laughs> okay, you you might, but we're not What about an about... A1 and A2? Just be like, I still need this. We don't know what the fuck we're going to get. But, so you don't have anything in place in case you get the thing that you're expecting to get? No. It sounds like you're not good at you're not good at organizing this shit. That's all it sounds like. Uh, that's why we have fucking loot master. Like, just speak up. Like, when the shit drops, speak up. Use your words. Use your words. Tell them loot Or you know what? You can use your words, and you don't need loot master. <laughs> it takes the same amount of time. Oh my god. Oh man. Either way, the entire point is that players are gonna fucking greet on everything. <laughs> That's, That's the entire point. point. Because you can spear... They literally made a point to talk about spear binding, and we'll talk about that later. Because yes. it's all ethereal grade. It can all be turned into materia. This will probably be a reliable source of grade 5 materia. Our first reliable source of grade 5. Yeah, buddy. That market board is going to be flooded. That market board is going to be flooded with a lot of things. Because there's minions that drop here. There's gathering Yeah, we nodes. saw a minion drop in the... The Hunting Hawk. It was called the Hunting Hawk. How much do you think it's going to go for? Oh, that thing's going to go for tens of millions the first day. <laughs> oh, we going to make some money. <laughs> yes. If, if it drops, you got to you got to make sure it actually drops first. I know, and everyone's going to want that shit too. Mm -hmm. Um so and there's gathering nodes on the islands too. I actually just started Woo! doing my red script grind again today cuz I haven't done it in like a month and a half. Same. I did I got my body piece today. I have the weapon body feet and the offhand I don't have any of the other accessories. Those are nine mil each on my server right now, so I gotta gather some favors or something. And I'm working on all the rest of the red script stuff too. It was nice though, because they they when they initially described gathering notes, they said, Oh, you might have to have people defending them while they gather. And they literally showed them sitting down, like just like <laughs> watching Nothing. out. Yeah. No, there was one sandworm, and you could see a bunch of enemies in the area. They also made sure to show us that there are nodes for fishing, mining, and botany, all three. Yeah fishing i don't know what the fuck I, i'm not gonna protect the fisher so they can do their fucking next big fish quest all right that shit better be useful for something <laughs> it probably will be it better be because if if they don't but, if they aren't i'm not fucking defending you while you go fish to try and fill your fishing log okay but let's let's be honest with ourselves in a non-pre-made party non-fc party the quote-unquote df party 
How how many of those parties do you think will actually sit there and wait on you to gather? There, you know, it's probably more likely you're going to have to establish ahead of time. We are doing gathering nodes. Any any gathering objective, we are doing. So if you have a level sixty gatherer, that should already be established. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. The duty finder groups or the party finder groups should establish that ahead of time. No, it should be like. You mean really like, like like unsaid? Like, it, that un, should be the unspoken. Un, the unwritten yeah, it's, rule. it should be an un, unwritten, unspoken thing. Like you're going in there to gather. They're, like why wouldn't you gather while you're here? Maybe some people are more concerned with the gear than they are the materials. That's more likely because that's time taken away from killing. That that could be important to some people. Whether they, <laughs> whatever. I I, th I, I think I'm it's mining. Important. Fuck that shit. Uh, about to be. About to be doing botany too, but I'm mining. Like, I don't get me wrong. Wrong. I want the gear, but I want all the shit I can get from mining too. What the fuck? I gotta make money. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. And also, esoteric can be gotten on the islands. Yay! So we can cat faster. Woo! Yeah, I don't even know why I would even do dungeons anymore. Like, I'll probably still do dungeons, but still, I mean, a like... lot of it. A lot of it for me is PvP. Yeah, that's a lot of my esoteric. You know, I've seen so many people who like do PvP every day, and they're like, just "Get rid of these fucking people, just capping esoterics that don't take the game seriously." No, get I still rid of... take it. I still take it. <laughs> but that's what it makes me think of. It makes me think of the people like, "Yeah, I kept but... using PvP." No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, I take it seriously to an extent. When I know we have no fucking chance in here in hell, no. Fuck it. I'm here for the free chicken. I'm here for the free essos. Let's just get this show <laughs> shit over with. If there was free chicken in PvP, I'd do it. I'd do it a little like, bit. Like, let's just get this shit over with. Let the Maelstrom win. They're almost close. You know, why, why aren't y'all winning yet? Why are we coming back? I actually have to make effort now. See, that's the thing I go through every time I'm in PvP. Yeah. <laughs> Stack mid, please. Stack. Please. There you go. Alright, so we have mining, we have botany, we have fishing, we also have flying. They, so, okay, remember how we said we were going to have to unlock flying when we went in there, and she's like, oh, it'll take 10, 15 minutes. About 10. Yeah, we have to unlock it every time. Every single time you go in. I like this better now. I like this more <laughs> than when we only had to, when I, we thought we only had to unlock it once and it took 10 to 15 minutes, because now having to unlock the flying has, has the purpose. Before it was like, okay, you discovered the first island, now you have it, okay, no one gives a shit anymore. You literally have to do every objective or at least find the flying uh, areas on the first island before you can go to all the other islands. It's like a, it's an objective within the thing. It has a reason at this point. So in essence, really, you're looking at about 80 minutes of battle slash gathering time. Well, I'm assuming you'll have to kill stuff and whatnot. There's still going to be stuff on the island you land There's on. still going to be stuff on the island, but essentially, if you want to knock this out, get this out the way first, which I probably will. It, you have to knock this out first. Yes, you don't have you, a you're going to have to knock this out. You have no choice. That's, that's 80 minutes of time left. This is 5 to 10 minutes, 5 being the least, least of the two evils, um, that you... You were just going to use just to get all the uh, currents and make sure you can move, you know, move about. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not – don't get it twisted. It's not really – it's 90 minutes, but five to ten minutes of this will be getting the currents. After that, you're looking at about 80 minutes or less. Yeah, you're looking about 80 minutes to go do whatever you want. The, the yeah. objective's linear for the first five to ten. So that makes it even more – fucking competitive you have now not not have 90 minutes you have 80 minutes it's not any more competitive for that reason First how does that make it more competitive the First only the, the only time that that ever becomes competitive the uh, only way that becomes competitive is if you zone in and there's already a bunch of people there saying this thing just spawned and then you know what you tell them do something else for five ten minutes <laughs> You guys just standing there waiting is going to waste your time, and then you'll have the people who pull early and people that don't. But the odds of that happening, that's such a small window for that to happen when you zone in and it's immediately the mm -hmm. boss is there, and you're like, well, fuck, we got to get there ASAP. A lot, a lot of groups are going to Leroy. They're going to they're gonna get fucked over, but they're going to Leroy. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and then I, I, I think eventually... This this will turn out to be a collaborative event between all seventy two people in the zone. I think people will kind of have an understanding of what the goal is, what the farming paths are. I've played enough Diablo three to know all about optimal farming paths, and eventually, depending on where you start, someone's going to map out the most optimal amount of the most optimal path you can take 
mm-hmm. uh, in the area. I just, it's going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. Um. So, okay. So on top of the flying, there's other goals on the duty list that you can do, like you know, kill X amount of enemies here. They're optional. You know, unlike in dungeons where you go through and they have to be done. Those goals just help you get esoterics, pretty yeah. much. So you don't have to do them at all. They're completely optional. And then we have the power of the enemies. We were told these enemies are going to be like level 80, like crazy high level. They are given ranks based on Norman numeral. We've only seen ranks 1 to 5 so far. 1, 2, and 5 are the ones that we saw. And I really wish... They went through those shit so I really, easily. really wish they could have actually shown us a little bit more how powerful. Because they pulled a rank 5. I expected that shit to demolish them when he nope. pulled it. Nope. Not only did they have God Mode on and killed it in a single hit, but when it cleaved both, it cleaved two party members, it did not do nearly as much damage as I expected it to do. It literally cleaved, I think, a Dragoon and the tank. Go figure, a Dragoon. And, um... <laughs> I don't remember if it was a dragon. It, it was another party member that wasn't Yoshi P. And it did like 5,000 and maybe 3,000 to the tank. So I'm wondering how high these ranks go. What's the highest rank? Rank 10? Maybe they're just geared like that. Oh. Maybe that's part of the god mode. The gear is part of the god mode? No, no, no. Their, their damage resistance is part of the god mode. We've seen, if you look in the trailers, you can see that they have they have more god modes. Because, like, in the trailer, you can see the I'm Invincible animation when they're getting hit. Mm-hmm. So that could be it. Uh, and also dropped an I-180 gear. Which like deep, it was uh, Deep Mist Breaches of Fending. And then mm-hmm. the Hawk that we spoke about. Uh, stats randomly rolled on. But only had two stats. And that's a big question. A lot of people wonder what the stats are going to be like. If it's really going to be competitive with raid gear. I think that's something we want to talk about later because that has to do with the thing they talked about for 3.2. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty big. We already know but about I, the But chess. I have a theory about this. I, I, have... I know you do, Sly. You're a good co-host. I know you have theories. I trust in you. Uh, then we got a bunch of other little quality of life stuff. There's going to be new items for the voyages. Uh, they're increasing the rate at which you can gain levels with your airships. So there, now your laziness is rewarded. You're welcome. New furnishing, house sharing, and the demolishing of estates. We talked about the demolishing of estates last week. They yeah, just we re- reiterated it's going to happen. Yeah. They, they they even gave a link to the Lodestone. They didn't really talk about it. Like, here, here's a link to the Lodestone post. Go look at it. Yeah, there's. I mean, I, good. They didn't waste more time. It was already a three-hour live letter. They did. We didn't need yeah. any more. The house sharing uh, thing is something I've been waiting for because Mel has a house, and I don't. I could have bought a house at some point, at any point. I've had the money for it. But I never did because I was like, I'm just gonna hold out till you know, I can go to her house. Oh, now you get your house. You can play house. Yay! Yeah, she's never gonna let me fucking touch anything in that house because <laughs> I have no sense of fashion at all. Yeah, Lex is gonna design the house. Zero. I want to make it a velvet room house, but Lex is gonna design the house. That's fine. Yeah, that's probably for the better. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> anyway. Um, so you're going to be able to give people on your friends list access to the house. You can give up to two people on your friends list access. So that could be an eternal bond Ooh. partner and a friend, for example. So a total of three people. The thing is, you have to remember when it comes to the demolishing of the house, the owner is responsible for ensuring that the house does not get demolished in the case of personal housing. You cannot have friends, people on your friends list just be like, oh, I'm in the house. It's fine. No, you're going to lose the house. So remember that those of you inviting people into your house, they will not be able to look after your house indefinitely since they cannot, since they are not you. New mounts, new minions, new mount, the Pegasus mount, a wyvern mount. Cool. Cool. You think either of those are going to be on Le Cash Shop? No. No? No. Good. I'm glad you had the right answer. New minions, a Pisa minion. That thing is is horror incarnate. I even put down in the notes. Oh, it's I, going I know, to I know you put that in the all. notes. I'm like, dude, the Pisa just, it's just, it's going to fucking murder us all. It just looks so clueless. It reminds me of the, the obsessed girlfriend meme. Ah, uh, that one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it looks like, so clueless. The Pisa looks so clueless. Now, twin tinier. That thing. Thanks for taking the pun before I could say it. We have Sig to thank for that one anyway. Yes. Thank you, Sig. A Twintania minion. It's Twin- also going to fucking murder us all, by the way. <laughs> Twintania. The best best pun. Thank you, Sig, for that pun. I made sure to include it here. I wonder if the minion can like fight with the other minions. 
Well, I mean, the only minions that really fight are what? You have the the dog and the cat. You have Louis Swan and Bahamut. Mm -hmm. You have the Moogles, which interact with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a few other ones mixed in there. I, I kind of like the idea of interacting minions. I, I want them to keep this going. <laughs> See, I like because later on they had the item lead guy in, on, the, on the thing. And he mentioned that the, the heavy hatchling, if it smells food... Like if there's a culinary nearby, it'll uh, it'll start like sniffing around and like trying to find the find the food where it is. <laughs> I like that idea. I, I, I like these little nods. I like that. Yeah, I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely a fan of that. New hairstyles, hairstyles from the contest. Now this is where things get a little shaky. If I pull up the official notes right here, because we we're reading from the unofficial notes. There are mm -hmm. there, there is a set of official notes. If I'm not mistaken. They mentioned a few items that are being added to the cash shop. One of them is Minfilia's outfit and other outfits from the um, from the main the main characters are being added to that. So everybody, if you didn't know already, Broomfilia is going to be a thing. Yeah, Broomfilia is going to exist now with the broom mount on top of uh, on top of the Minfilia outfit. It's female only outfit, so they're probably going to have a male outfit equivalent. Most people guess it's going to be Thancred's. Um, I'm trying to find. He's he's got to go for email. Don't worry. Well, no, I'm trying to find where it says right. about Minfilia uh, being the her outfit being put in the cash shop because I believe they said some of these some hairstyles going to be put in there as well. Come on, no, here it is. Do you have any plans to add 3.0 Yishtola or Isale's hairstyles? We're planning to introduce a set of equipment and hairstyles which will allow the players to look like NPCs. So these hairstyles that they're talking about here are not the ones. These are ones from the hairstyle contest, including the afro, which mm -hmm. has a great dance shown with it in the trailer. A fantastic dance. It's like I've seen that dance somewhere before, or at least part of it. Your chat just blew up. Mm -hmm. Like Sly dance. Sly dance. Is this the Sly Dance? Sly, you predicted this. I'm glad you were there to share it with us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad. I, I, just, I didn't say anything. I... I'm sure you didn't, because that would have been that would have definitely been a, yeah, bad move. Um, so this is this is the big thing. Uh, this is a this is a point that people are kind of upset about. I don't blame them. Anytime anything gets added to the cash shop, people get a little bit uh, a little bit salty. They're literally the sets of equipment and hairstyles of the cast of the Science of the Seventh Dawn and other characters like Ysail and whatnot. I wonder why they chose the cast shop specifically for these things. It seems like the things that like make the least sense lore wise for us to have are the things that get put in the cast shop. Like things that will literally conflict with lore are the things that get added to the cast shop. It because seems like that it, almost every time. Because they know it doesn't really you're it's telling me that there's... it's ancillary. It, it really doesn't matter. So, I mean, it does matter. Like, okay, <laughs> seriously, how many people? Even even I throw a nod to you, Sale. You know, but I'm not gonna buy her hair. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so creepy. I'm not gonna buy her hair. I mean, but the thing is, it's like for people like I don't care. I don't care it's in the cash shop. I wasn't I don't glamour much anyway. But there are plenty of people who do care. And some people are just upset for the same reason they're upset of any cash shop in any game is the principal. But these are ancillary items. They have no meaning whatsoever and they shouldn't, you know, because Oh, they have some meaning, all right. They mean what you'll look like or what your character can look like. And that means a lot I to mean, some people. I mean, I uh, mean, but I mean in the sense of, you know, pay to win. They don't have that meaning, so thank God they don't and they won't. I don't think that's the thing that bothers people. I think it's the fact it's a sub base game that has a cosmetic cash shop when they could very they could find places for these items in games. I think that's ultimately what gets the people, and I don't blame them so, for that. So they so they can find a place for Slutnir for well Slutnir, you know Odin. We literally got the Odin fight around the same time we got Slutnir added in the optional items. It was pretty it was pretty bad timing realistically for them to add an Odin fight and then say oh here's this mount in the cash shop like that was terrible timing on their part. So are, you, are you saying that they should eliminate the cash shop? I'm not saying they should eliminate it. It's done good for the game. It's done good for me as a broadcaster because if I want to do giveaways, you know, that's what the cash shop I use it for. I use it to do giveaways, you know. But maybe not such high profile items. I think that's okay. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let's let's make this separation right now. 
Right. What do you consider high profile? What do you consider, you know, highly the most highly requested items? <laughs> like it's been. Are very... we really requesting? Yeah, ice heart hair. A lot of people ice want... heart hair. Yeah. Do we? I, I mean, and then you all... I love legs. I love her to death. Rest in peace, sweetie. But goddamn, I don't want to be her. But a lot of people do, and a lot of people don't even want to be her. They just want the hairstyles an option. There are people who buy at least the Fantasia a week sly and change their character look. I'm not even going to speak on that, but go ahead. <laughs> so these things do matter to some people. And some, for some people, it's just the principle of having these things in a cash shop versus having them in the game. Which we have very little say in because people buy it. For the few people that complain, there's a ton of people out there just spending the money on it who don't give a shit. That's the thing that's worth remembering. The, a lot for every one person that's complaining, there's at least one other person who's just as yes, yeah. You have to remember the cash shop got cheered for at Fan Fest. <laughs> remember that. At first they revealed it, and half the crowd went yeah, and the other half went. <sighs> and then he said, there. and then he said no pay to win. Everyone went yeah. yeah <laughs> everyone in unison. It's like, yeah, and that just goes to show how many people are willing to spend money on the cash factor shop. of the cash shop is that it's never going to be pay to win. This is just cosmetic stuff. So why are we in an uproar about this? I, I like this in the chat. Next up on the cash shop, chat option to report RMT, <laughs> which we still don't have. Right click report. Uh, I, I mean, if they're if it's helping them do stuff like the European data center. That's the thing. So originally they used the cash up as a means we're using this to fund the European data center. What is the next project that the money from the cash up gets work gets spent on? That's the that's the question. That's what the community is going to be looking for. What is the next thing it does? Because immediately I'm you know, I know a lot of people are thinking oceanic servers. That's a big one people are looking for. Um, people are looking for an east and west coast, uh, you know, connection, but then that separates the North American servers. So mm -hmm. uh, th there's a lot of things people are looking for infrastructure wise. I'm looking for fucking hire some people, please. <laughs> I know it's more complicated than that. I know you have to train people. I know that if in the industry, you can't just be like, yeah, you, we want you. Come on. We come, had this discussion already. We had do this you, discussion. Do but, you really want to wait on it, that training time? I want they got to do something they can't just not train people ever like <laughs> they have to do something if it goes towards hiring more staff I'll be happy you won't be happy with the wait time I'm just gonna tell you that right yeah now. probably not but I got other games to play so it's okay okay it's not me who you should be concerned about it's everyone else who couldn't stand the extra month for right. for 3.1 um all right so what else do we have here so I actually thought this was cool. We have two new camera options. Idling cameras and group cameras. The idling camera is literally like a, it's like a screensaver that like hones in on nearby NPCs and players. This is good. So, so good for AFKs. Yo, now you can AFK between content patches like never before. <laughs> that was the first thing. I put that in the translation. I thought it was perfect. I was like, this is the perfect thing. See, that almost makes me want to like, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I have a be right back screen for stream. Every you're never fucking AFK whenever I show up to your screen. It's your stream, and even when you are, you just turn the camera off. <laughs> I can turn the camera off and put a little message in the center. Be right back. Pause for the cause. You know. That's yeah, it. and and now you can just throw it in idle camera mode while you're AFK. Just yeah. full screen idle camera mode with you know slides with your name at the top, whatever, and you're good to go. I like it. Let's check on what's going on in Ishgard. Yeah, now it's just a matter of where the people best places to People are freezing to death, and people are selling shit. People. Here's, <laughs> I want an idle camera on Box Guy. If you don't know who Box, <laughs> if you don't know who Box Guy is, go to Limsa Lominsa. Go in between the two marketplaces. There's there's a few there's a few Box Guys in Limsa. A dude that's always holding a box. He never walks anywhere. He never puts the box down. He is there 24 hours, seven days a week. Holding a box. He is box guy. So what you gonna do with this box? Uh, Sometimes he looks like his arms are getting a little tired and then he just props it back up and he's good to go. We also have the group camera, which I thought was far more impressive. It automatically syncs, it, it forces, you know, people to look at the camera or it, when it takes the picture, it takes all the character models in frame mm -hmm. and makes them face the camera. It syncs up their emotes like dance moves or thumbs up or things like that. That's a pretty cool feature. I'm actually yeah, a pretty cool pretty big fan. Yeah, of I was uh, I was actually interested in that too because 
how many times have we, you know, cleared content and, you know, everybody getting a shot, everybody getting a shot. It's going to, like, every time it looks like an awkward fucking shot. Even when you try to do it yourself, it looks like an awkward fucking shot. It's, and you also and you also always always have that one person in the middle and they have to send it to everyone. This kind of makes it a little bit better. Nika brought that up in LVR this last Sunday where it, you know it's always awkward that the person taking the picture has to be in the center otherwise it just looks stupid. By the way, hi Nika. Sorry. <laughs> that was so creepy, Sly. So you got you got you got to do it that way. You got to do it. That no way. you don't. No yes, you don't. Do. You don't yes, have to do it anyway. Yes, you do. New dungeons. We had Saint Mochions or Mochions, whatever the fuck it ends up being. Arboretum. Arboretum. We have Pharaoh Serious Hard Mode. Saint. So I'm going to say this now that we're starting to talk about like the bosses and shit. On top of the Brachiosaur from, uh, from Final Fantasy VI, these bosses are creepy as fuck. They are. They are. Are you talking about for both dungeons? I'm talking about for everything. Like most of the bosses in this patch are nightmare fuel. <laughs> Especially the Void Arcs bosses. Those things. One of them is literally has a shitting mechanic. Granted, Cerberus had a shitting mechanic too when you left yeah. the stomach, but like it's this boss, you watch it eat and then poop out players. That's part of, you literally has an animation for that. But Saint Mochion's Arboretum is Orm Veil 2.0 to me. It's got it's got it's got plants, it's got parasite bears or barasites. It's What's got it's got Malboros, it's got a beehive in there, and it's got this, it's, it's not Reflacious Uncle or something at the end. It's the Airy. No! The Airy? What about, you mean the Airy? You mean the second area between the first and second boss with the with the, the sleeping Durgans and the dive bombing Durgans? No, 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 not the Airy. What am I thinking of? Um, what are fuck, you thinking of? Fuck, fuck, which dungeon was it with the, the boss? I don't know what the hell you're trying to say. The... The first boss was like a B. A B? No, no, if Reflasia. Fuck, what am I thinking of? God You're thinking it. of Samal. Samal, thank you. I was, there I, was you go. I was thinking it wasn't Samal, but yeah. No, it's it, Samal. Yeah, it's Samal. It's Samal, basically. No, Samal doesn't look anything like St. Mochan's. The first part of Samal does. No, it doesn't. What no, are you? Bullshit. Are you, are you high right no. now? I think, Sly, I think you need to get your eyes checked. Are you serious? Like, the Reflasia part, like, the reflation before it gets, yeah, it looks it's small, some of small, not all of it. Yeah, like two percent. Fine. You gotta have you gotta you gotta get your eyes checked, man. <laughs> Cause this those two fucking places look nothing alike. <laughs> Vegetation, dude. Veg. Can I get a quote for that? Vegetation, dude. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Other than the last boss and the first boss both being like Reflasia kind of type mobs, I don't see any similarity <laughs> at all. One's a mountain. One's an, one's a friggin' an arboretum. <laughs> yes. There's vegetation. In... The vegetation looks nothing alike, though. Yes, I know, because uh, vegetation in the arboretum is more extreme. It's like, yes. Sly, that's arboretum. like saying I have a garden and my neighbor has a garden. And they look exactly the same when they're when we're growing. One's growing tomatoes and one's just growing flowers. Like they look nothing alike. <laughs> All right, you're killing me here with this one, Sly. Okay, you're killing me. That being said, a lot of bosses are kind of scary. I saw literally the Malboro <laughs> turns a turning bad breath. <laughs> it's got like five ads that do turning bad breaths, and then the mm -hmm. boss itself does a turning bad breath. Uh. I'm still interested in the minimum item level being 170. See how hard these dungeons are actually going to be. They're not going to be that hard. Imagine, imagine that. Imagine being fresh I-170 though. That's going to be pretty rough on fresh I-170s. Not on the people, you know, I have like 200, 210, but yeah. fresh I-170 is going to be pretty rough, man. <laughs> there you go. More interestingly though, uh, loot restriction Alexander Normal is being removed. Didn't see that. Um, yay. A. <laughs> that just all that means is that I might actually get body pieces from there now. That's all it means for me. I might actually pursue some body pieces from there. Glamour. No, like alt jobs and shit. Like if um, I don't, if I don't, um, get, if I don't get them from it, Void Arc. It's glamour. Or it's glamour. I don't glamour. It, it, it's glamour. That's not glamour. It's glamour. Uh, Earn EXP. The level fifty dungeons are having experience points added to them. The mobs themselves, at the very least. Yeah. Uh, they're buffing EXP in level fifty one plus dungeons, which now I feel better because I barely been leveling jobs because I was like, can't fucking do it anymore. I can't. 
fucking do it. And they're nerfing dungeons. A lot of the 51 to 59 dungeons. Yeah, a lot of I feel people like had a, a lot of people had a sore spot about this. Like because it's like if you make every dungeon easier, like eventually players are just not going to get better. Players already who don't give a shit about getting better are not, but this is not helping. <laughs> but these are the older dungeons. But they they still matter, you know, players are going to go through these dungeons at some point. So this goes back to what I said like months ago. Um, is it? Do you think it's okay for for the developers to kind of you know give players new newer players the tools to kind of catch up with the longtime players? Because this is exactly I don't I don't it. mind that. It's just that the difficulty like I, like only thing that comes to mind are Orin Vale. Sometimes new players have a because that I don't know I put fifty one to fifty nine in my notes I I don't know they just said pre sixty dungeons you know it could be other dungeons too but here's my thing why okay er, like a lot of people are gonna get mad about this but why are y'all getting mad when if you're gonna be doing this stuff if you're gonna be doing like leveling um when you leveling, want it to be easier in the duty finder so that way even if y'all are rushing finder this shit group, anyway y'all are speed running the hell out of it anyway I want to just get in get out. Why are y'all mad? I guess it's it comes down to wanting to see the player base improve because a lot of the player base doesn't seem to care about how well they play, um, and giving giving making it people easier. People are and going easier. to get mechanics themselves. Like a dungeon, it's it's really okay. A lot of like a dungeon's not going to teach you mechanics. You're going to probably learn. Mechanics. Honestly, it's not mechanics. It's literally basic functionality on your job. Like you know how you know you know how um, many black mages. This is probably the most common example I can give. How many black mages I see? I go into like a level 35, 38, 41 dungeon. One of those, and they're like fire three, fire three, fire three, blizzard three, blizzard three, blizzard three. They've 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 never had something where they actually have to care about their rotation. They can do whatever they want and usually get by. And maybe a duty finder group will give them some shit or or give them some advice and help them improve. But there's nothing pre-60 that sort of warrants you actually learning your job. I think that's where most people are upset because they want new players to come in and they want them to, you know, actually but learn as they're going there's on. There's that dichotomy where, you know, dungeons, there is this clear cut dichotomy where dungeons, you're not really going to give a shit. I mean, you're doing the dungeon, 9 out of 10, you're probably leveling. That's it. Get in and get out. Whereas raid, you actually give more of a shit in raid. You... You I I fucking you try wherever to. I go. I'm a try hard dude. Try hard. Don't, I, I hate. Don't, don't I hate. Tell I, me you don't get bored in a fucking day. I get bored if I shut my brain off and just pretend like I'm not there and not do shit. <laughs> That's when I get bored. When my brain has to. When my brain can shut off in the middle of the dungeon. You're you're welcome. Two point X. I'm bar. just I'm just saying. Like don't like people don't act like you get bored in a daily because never read fractal really. Really? You're going to tell me that? Why do, you, why do you think I play Astro? Because every 30 seconds I have something to either get excited or rage about. <laughs> Don't tell me that you just just have become completely bored of it. You just want to get in, get out. That's the thing. I don't, I mean, I'm actually giving effort, but... You know, I'm not, not. I don't like the term try hard because try hard is literally just someone who's not trying at all's way of saying you're trying. It's not try hard, it's try. Right. Try. <laughs> try. I, I, are, are you going Yoda, do or do not? There is no try. Do or do not. There is no try. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I'm hoping that the... Because uh, they've mentioned the whole like training hall thing. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that kind of rectifies this when we get the training hall. Uh, players will actually be given some semblance of what their job is supposed to be doing. Because if they're going to keep nerfing these dungeons, players are never going to put in the effort to learn how to play their jobs while they're actually leveling, leveling up. They're going to wait till they hit 60, and even then, they... They are basically, it's like learning something new right at 60 because they were playing however the fuck they wanted before that. I'll admit, this is kind of ruining the kind of learning curve for everybody. I'll, I'll agree with it. I'll agree learning with you curve. there. But, you know, I can agree that I actually took it a little bit more seriously in Raid than I did in Dungeon. Acceptable. Like, you, you, you have to step your game up in Raid. So, naturally, that's going to be, that's going to be the point where I think a lot of new players are going to learn hopefully hopefully we hope but yeah that's, i think that's going to be the point where these newer players who breeze through the, these dungeons because they're easier um get to raid and they're like holy crap what the fuck have i been doing 
I need to take a step back and, you know, kind of improve. That's that. Every every new player has to go through that block. Every new player that has to go through that block now, now that, you know, Coil's a little bit easy, that's not going to be the block. Maybe T9 still. T9's still going to be that block. Yeah, even, if, if, even if they bother to do it, let's, let's be they honest. They ain't going to fucking bother. They, they ain't going to do that shit. No, but, um, yeah. Training hall is just Faust. Yeah, great. <laughs> I, would, I would actually. That's a good training hall. Thank I would. Ex- you. I would accept that. Thank I would accept. You. I would accept, accept Faust, as a, Faust as a training hall. Yes, for DPS maybe, but I think we need to have different training halls for different jobs. I, well, yeah. I remember my idea that you were so fucking against, where I was like, "Oh, it's perfect because then you can have people who are experienced with the job go to the training hall and." They can, you know, talk with people, and people can go to a place where they have common ground. They can meet new people. You were an asshole about it, and you were like, you got a fucking chat window. And I was like, Sly, you just don't get it. That, that's what you have! You, yeah. have. you have a chat window. You have... God damn it, use your words. Use you your use words. your words. Use your words. Reach out to people. This is an MMO. Reach out to people. Sly, you uh, use we're not, your we're words. Not gonna get, we're not going to go back nope. there, but nope. just, just, just use your fucking words. Just use your fucking words. Use All right, Sly, fine. Use your outside Fine. Voice. We'll have it your way. Okay. It's our hard ass over here. Anyway, we got PvP EXP buffs. whoop the fucking do Good. Now I can... <sighs> now I can... Now I'm still going to lose every game and not get my mount. So it doesn't fucking matter. But <laughs> overall, whatever, you know. Uh, more Ninja Mudra compensations. Uh, disabling Dark Side, Dark Knight effects. You know, just something people have been asking for. Uh... Speed run clear times for undersized parties. What? Uh, hopefully, there's like a gold New medal. world record. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, there's a gold. Hopefully, you get gold medals for it or something. <laughs> Trials and duties added to the party finder. Okay, this was interesting. Other adjustments to jobs. Gerbs. This was interesting to me. So, ninja TP changes. Oh God. I'm not opposed as long as they don't make it worse. <laughs> not opposed to this. Because hopefully it means that uh, we won't uh, run out of TP so fast. Paladin TP adjustments was the more interesting one to me. They made Dark Knight TP adjustments, and now Dark Knights were even with Paladins to some degree. Okay. Now Paladins are getting TP adjustments, so does that mean that they're going to be able to last their TP pools? going to last longer than a Dark Knights? No. I'm, I'm curious. No. I'm curious. No, and more more curious that all they mentioned was TP adjustments to Paladin and nothing else. Everyone wanted to know about. It's like, oh, can you make clemency uninterruptible? Can you take our stances, off, our oaths off the global cooldown? Can you make them not interrupt combos? Can you make us useful in endgame content? All the things people actually were requesting, <laughs> and they're like, yes, TP adjustments. Perfect. How many of these requests would we have if we didn't have Savage? None. Exactly. There we go. Uh, I don't I, I maybe, I, that, no one's to say that's the only change they're making to Paladin. Maybe I think that's a major change they're making to Paladin. It, it is a pretty big deal. Paladin being able to last longer in a fight puts them on better footing with the Dark Knight. If they can last, if their TP can outlast the Dark Knight's TP, then they may see that DPS gap close a little bit just due to, re, just to avoid, just because of their avoiding resource starvation. So is this Square making other jobs viable? They were always viable. It's just the community. No, uh, don't don't even try. Yes, I am no, going I mean, there. They were they they're they fucking viable. They want to get to that point. They want to get to that point, but it's there's always going to be something that's mathematically better, no matter what they do. With there's was, always like, there's always I, I feel like there's going to be always that composition um, check. It's always a composition check to me. It's and, never a composition. It's a composition well, check when you're going for world first. After that, once you have the gear, it's about playing your job correctly. Then it's a composition check, period. No. After you have the gear, it has nothing to do with your composition. It's about playing the job correctly. You could fucking bring two monks into A4 right now and be perfectly fine. And have no dragon Would or you? ninja. Would you? Okay, first. Just to prove a point, for, yeah. When you were going for the race, would you? No, but that doesn't matter. That's irrelevant because you, no one's racing it's anymore. Uh, okay, it's not relevant now, but when we actually do get these new patches, it's going to be relevant. It's it's relevant 
And guess what? No matter what they do, it doesn't matter what they do because some there's always going to be something that's compositionally the best. So bringing things up and trying to make them all relevant or viable is an irrelevant statement because there's always going to be a I best. I feel like eight. you should be able to be competitive in any job and be on par. You can with composition. Let me point this out that uh, there were six kills of A3 Savage on the same week. They, you know, the week where it was you know Elysium Group One, Elysium Group Two, uh, Lucrezia, BG. I can't remember uh, Synergy, and I think I think Finale was the last one. Um, and what's it called? BG didn't give a fuck, and they beat it with Paladin. I believe Paladin and Monk in that week. The only job I think that didn't get uh, didn't get used in the first week was Astro. They showed, yeah, you can be the you can be competitive with a different job composition, but nobody gave a fuck that they did it in the first week, and they were just like, "But Dragoon Ninja is better, you know, so that's what we're gonna run with." You know, it didn't matter that somebody showed. Yes, even though we weren't first, we did it in the same with the same gear available in the same frame. It was doable. People don't give a shit about that. So it doesn't matter how viable they try to make everything. People are still going to find a composition that's best for every single fight. And they're going to complain. So while it's good that they're buffing, people need to get that fucking idea out of their head in the first place if they're not racing for world first. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Bring the player that's good. If you have a 1400 DPS monk that wants to join your static and you say no because you want to bring this 1000 DPS Dragoon, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> That's all I got to say. People will exclude perfectly good players just because they're not the job they're looking for. It kills me on the inside to see that shit. I'm glad they're making some buffs. But then even more surprisingly, they're buffing or they're making adjustments to Bard and Astro. They don't say what, wow. just that there's going to be adjustments. I don't know what the hell they're doing there because they're buffing Astro again. Holy shit. Oh my god. Astro's in an all right place. The RNG is the only thing that's frustrating. So you think that's they're making it. a change to RNG? No, I don't think they are because if they make a change to RNG, the job will be completely overpowered. It's it's RNG that makes the job balanced. So I'm curious what the bard. I think the bard adjustment might even be the problem with flaming arrow. If you try to place it after using your GCD, it doesn't queue up, so it's kind of awkward. I hope that's what the change is. Yeah. Hopefully that's what the change hopefully. is. Well, hopefully for me. Oh, man. Okay, now I'm done being heated. We gotta talk about the Void Arc. <laughs> this was interesting, the Void Arc. We didn't see Diablos once in the trailer, after talking about his screenshot last week. He's not one of the bosses in the Void Arc, but he's there. That means one of two things. He's either trash, <laughs> or he's part of the bigger story. And we won't fight him there, we'll fight him later. What do you think? They well, SE has had a tendency of showing final bosses in dungeons, um, in past trailers, but he kind of had this figured out. He's there, I think he's, I, I think he's a bigger part. I, I agree, I think he's, I think he's a bigger part of the whole story. He very clearly had a major impact on the War of the Magi, and well. He's a bad dude. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it just it just seemed odd to me that we're summoning they're going to summon Diablos on a ship. Well, I mean, they're not going to do it. It's the void. The void is on the ship. And on top of that, caught she or uh yeah, or Kate Sith as people prefer to hear it called. Yes. Caught she. Gotcha. Um what's it called? Uh I, I still think that I guess maybe they're on equal footing. That was the only thing cuz I still think the caught she is probably the most important character. On the Void Arc, but Diablos is... I don't think he's trashed. I would be really odd if Diablos was trash. So you're thinking... I'm not going to say he's trashed, but is there a bigger bad than Diablos? I think, this... I think it's Kachi. Really? I think I think Kachi... With... Kachi, Kachi is the bigger bad than I, Diablos? I, th I think so. At the, like, at the end of the storyline, we're going to have to fight Kachi? Yeah. Kachi just seems so simple to me. It, that just seems too simple. It's unless, either that, unless he's not in his final form or anything. The, um, it's it's either that or Kachi is co sort of like the, you know, void creature that doesn't want the void to spill over into the into the world. Like kind of like the 
yeah, I'm from the bad side, but I'm on your side. Like, it's the only other thing. I don't think Diablos is on our side. That's for fucking sure. Yeah, yeah, that's for fucking sure. And, again, even if he was there, I don't trust 23 other people to do doors. <laughs> I don't trust y'all. I, yeah. I'm sorry. The first week, I'm not trusting the goddamn soul in every sub subsequent well, if week. Well, if he's not a boss there, you don't got to worry about it. Uh, okay. So I'll have to worry about that in the next one of the next two iterations of this this, um, this sunday night <laughs> <laughs> okay but also uh so we talked about that the the, the four bosses we saw one's a giant manta ray mm -hmm. one is Storm a Britain. one's a, a chimera that attaches to a plant that seems to like turn people into mandrakes and shit mm -hmm. the third one is ursula's sister which is the boss that eats people and shits them out and then we have a giant praying mantis, which people are assuming is the lost boss from World of Darkness. In Final Fantasy III, there were four Guardians of Darkness, and one of them was not present in our World of Darkness. That was Echidna. So the remaining, the remaining uh, beast, the remaining yes. Guardian beast, people are assuming that's who that is. Um, but more interestingly to me is that the Void Arc, we finally got confirmation. The Void Arc is not the sole location of all three of the new 24-man raids. We got... Didn't we kind of figure? Yeah, out? but I but you were on one side and I was on the other. I thought that the Void Arc might be the only location for all three, or that it might maybe take us somewhere eventually. Confirmation: the Void Arc, the it's in its entirety will be done after this patch, and there will be a different location entirely for the next two. The moon. Yeah, everyone's like, "Are we going to the moon? The we're going moon. to the moon. The Void Arc's gonna take us to the moon. Maybe." We're just making fun of Athos. Yeah, yeah. Let's be real. Love you, Athos. So uh, we got some information about loot behind that. So we already know you can get one upgrade material per week, and you can get one piece of equipment per week. Right. Equipment, whatever, we know you'll get one of those per eight people per party, unless they decide to do two per party, which would be great. Square Enix, drop two per, per boss, per clear. Yeah. That would be great. Just saying. But more interestingly is the way the upgrade materials are going to work. Um, there's going to be something called, like, an ancient coin, I believe they mentioned. And those are going to be traded in, like, once a week for, uh, coats and tries. It might even be something similar to a tombstone, where you get just enough ancient coins per week to get one or the other. It's almost like, uh, the original Extreme Primal Quest. You weren't playing the game yet when Primal Focus was out, I don't think. Cause, uh, I mean, I did. You, you Primal did Primal Focus eventually, yeah. Um, where it was, they gave you enough tokens per week to get a weapon. Yeah. kind of deal I, I think it might be like that but that that's they are they did mention um coats and twines right from the get-go not dips they did not mention dips yet which makes sense to me do you think they'll add dips or... i think they'll add dips in in 3.15 when the relic weapon comes out because i think at that point we'll have four different means i'm sorry we'll have a uh, three different i210 weapons i'm mm -hmm. feeling at that point so uh that's what i'm looking forward to void arc overall looks pretty badass but wait 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 when Okay, in the kind of Crystal Tower phase, okay. when they did bring Gift of the Archmages in, it was at the end. What the uh, unidentifieds? Uh, they yeah they well the thing is we can't really compare the unidentifieds because unidentifieds dropped in the second tier. It was one of the yeah. early items that you could get. The item to upgrade your weapon now drops from the final boss. It's a lot different than it was back then. And right. also back then the final boss of Coil had undisputably the best weapon until your relic was upgraded. Whereas now we already have two weapons that are potential best in slot, depending on stats. So I think that's enough of a variance to not really be able to judge it just yet. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have Singularity Reactor Extreme. Woo! This was a cluster. Like, if you have if you have uh, epilepsy, be careful. Yeah. There's, There's a lot, a of, lights lot of pretty lights. Yeah. Uh, he, they already said it's going to be harder than Ravana and Bismarck. And this, this got a lot of people's attention. They specifically noted a DPS check won't be what makes it hard. So it's Ravana. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess Ravana and Bismarck. A lot of people look at Bismarck as the DPS check was what was hard about it because a lot no, of people. No, I had... mean, like both, both of them were just mechanics. That's all they were. But Bismarck, a lot of people would run into issues where the where the party finder, the group couldn't kill one set of ads before the thing was oh, up. The, and on top of that, the Sanoa phase, like to, a, lot, phase. to yeah. a lot of people, Bismarck was literally a DPS check. Even if it was not supposed to be a difficult DPS check, for a lot of people, it was. Ravana, I agree with you, not really. Not really. 
So, yeah, I can kind of get that. I think, yeah, I, I think it's going to be more of a mechanics check than anything. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they want to distinguish that that's, I guess, after the, the stigma of Savage, they want to make sure that people are aware. It, it's, and, ob it's obviously important that they that this and up. in comparison to, well, not really in comparison to the hard mode fights, it was the easiest. Let's yeah. be honest. It, like, Knights of the Round was the easiest. You just went in, smacked shit, left. Yeah. So, I was, yeah, we were kind of, I mean, while we were all hype about what it was, we were kind of hoping for more, and hopefully we do get more in the EX iteration. Oh, you get a lot more. I think they said there's like 10 phases in the fight or something like that. And uh, on top of that, it drops weapons. Good ones, apparently. They, again, specifically said these are good weapons. Weapons that, if you have not yet beaten A3 and A4, should help you with those fights. Hooray! That so in a way, and another thing that they said uh, was that if you already completed Savage, yeah, but we you should have an easy time with this. We knew that though. But yeah, we anyone gets that if you if you already cleared Savage, you should be able to do any goddamn thing in the game. Let's be honest with that. So that's kind of a vague statement. Like from what what I'm getting that's pretty from this, true. <laughs> what I'm getting from this is that like it's. Almost comparable to Savage. I would say, I wouldn't say A2 because that's more of a... Because A2 is literally, it's your favorite. <laughs> and what if you had to ride a Gobwalker in this fight? Fuck's that. <laughs> Kiss my ass. No. no. I got my Gobwalker mount last week. Hooray. No, no, no. Your static isn't forcing you to use it. <laughs> I, I, get into, I get into the Gobwalker in the last phase. Oh. I, I ride the Gobwalker for about 90 seconds. Yeah, my static is forcing me. If we ever get the Godwalker they're giving it to me, I can't give it away. But, okay, so what's more interesting to me is the weapons are supposed to help with A3 and A4. That's got to mean they're 205 or 210. They have to be. If they're going to help, then ESO weapon, it's no different than having an ESO weapon. Unless it, if it's unless it's yeah, that, higher item level. Like, both of the things, really, the weapons and, quote-unquote, the difficulty, is really what's drawing my attention to this. Um... If I get a weapon that helps with A3, good. All the better. Shit. Hopefully it has skill speed on it. Um, it won't. It's it, won't. it still gets me it, that in 3.0, that's a statement that anyone can make. Oh, won't. I hope it has skill speed. And meanwhile, me as a ninja, please, don't, don't, don't have skill speed. It won't. For, for Dragoons, it won't. But um, it will. It will. Yeah. <sighs> Not like I'm going to use it, but that's besides the point. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the difficulty is just... Like, I'm kind of puzzled about the difficulty. Like, it, they left it so vague, but at the same time, we can all kind of decipher where it's going to go. Like, do you think it's going to be A1 difficulty, a little bit less than A3 difficulty? What do you, what do you think? I'm thinking it's probably a little bit on par, if not slightly below A1. Um, mm. If it was going to be the same as Savage, then I almost feel like they might as well just make a drop a 210 weapon. Like, yeah. uh, even if it's not equivalent to A4. It is possible that it's closer to between A1 and A2. To most people, A1 is harder than A2. I would yeah. agree. Um, but I'm, I'm happy that they're kind of... It, it's another middle core fight. And it's pretty important that they add another middle core raid fight. Something that can also help you get past the wall of A3 Savage. Because it, again, opens up content for the people that are currently struggling with it. Um, so, <laughs> this guy... I think I think it sounds like the right difficulty to me. It sounds like the rewards are decent enough. My question is, are there accessories from it as well? Like, I see weapons will drop. I don't think accessories are going to drop from here. Yeah, Robot, because we haven't got we haven't gotten accessories from any of the past primals, did we? Not no. Well, we have, but not Bismarck and Ravana. Yeah, the ones before that, yeah, they dropped like rings and shit. Like every single primal had an accessory. Extreme primal had an accessory before this. Uh, I just didn't take them. Bismarck and Ravana just don't seem to. I think they need. They should add accessories some places. Like the fact that we literally only have two I two ten accessories is kind of ridiculous. Right. Um. Or two I two ten. Well, mostly rings. But yeah, all of them we only have two of. So yeah. I would hope for it, but I don't think it's going to happen. Uh. What else do we have? Adjustments will be made to potency of medicinal items. Your strength pots, maybe ethers, maybe maybe they're going to make X ethers more relevant, or maybe just draconian ethers, please. So are they going to make X-Pots more? I don't know. <laughs> Fuck that, dude. Draconian Pots. Get on, get on our level. <laughs> Damn. All right. I got to get more money. I got to get more money. More money. 
Mo money, money, mo problems. Mm -hmm. Glamour items to make Blunk Fist invisible, so you can look like you're fighting barehanded. It's pretty cool. Something a lot of people have been asking for. Yeah. Adjustments to Red Gatherer scripts. Thank the fucking Lord. Bunch of other changes to 2.x, like gathering and crafting stuff. Glamour, multiple items on one slide. It's all stuff we've covered before. Yeah. The next big point they kind of spoke about was Lords of Arminion. Which, yeah, exactly. I knew that's how you were going to say. It's Gold Saucer in general. I thought what was funny were the new mini games. Um, and, and when I say that, I'm not saying that I won't try it. Like, again, they're half, like, I feel like half the community is for it, half the community is against, like, against it. Why did you, why did you spend dev time on this? You know, I feel like they didn't have to spend dev time. What, you mean Verminion or all the new stuff in the Gold Sauce? Verminion. Well, they, they're going to say that for all the new stuff here. Do you not I, hear I'll... that hype-ass music they got for Lords of Verminion? It is literally at, like a Jersey House Club every single match. It is, it, I was like, oh, I will isn't, that, isn't that Alexander already? No, it's, it's no. It's Gobby Rave. It's Gobby Rave. No, it's Gobby Rave, yeah, but it's not, like, legit house. It's, like, it's literally got do 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 <laughs> Like, you can hear the beat, like, getting higher and higher. And you're like, is it going to drop? Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's the drop? You're the worst DJ ever. You have no drop. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do the drop. The drop, you got to wait. Have you ever seen that Lonely Island song, uh, When Will the Bass Drop? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. One day, one day the beat will drop. So I'm looking forward to it. Everybody will explode. I thought this was funny. The new mini games. First of all, no one fucking does any of the mini games as it is now with like the basketball and shit. I mean, I did, I did cover her. I did cover her when it first came out. Yeah, you did cover her because it was right next to the chocobo racing thing. And, and we were just waiting. So yeah, you can do that shit. You right. One sure. maybe two of them before the queue popped. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, these new ones you weren't around for 1.0. These new Mini games are one or how you gathered in 1.0. They're it's a literally the 1.0 gathering system where you'd have to find the exact point to hit the tree, and that would give you the success. I was I was like seriously. Is how good were you? At, how, how good were you at that? It was. It's not hard. It's not that hard to do. It's just, I think it's funny that we literally, that it went from, this is our gathering, and this is our gathering system for the game. It's unique like this, too. Here's its fucking minigame in the gold saucer. <laughs> so, so do you think this is Square Enix making a nod at themselves? This is them just looking at old resources like, man, some people wanted that in the game. They're like, oh, what happened to the old gathering system? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> it's a minigame in the gold saucer. I thought it was funny. See, exactly. Look in the chat. That makes me happy because I really like that system there now you can enjoy it all you want and get mgp out of it as well if you're uh, gonna stay there for about hours sure yeah we got fender mounts to get dude but we got other new items like the uh, afro hairstyle uh i believe the new dance comes from that as well gonna get the afro no oh man disappointing i'm not I doing it either <laughs> and then a bunch of changes I, I might get the dance just to oh you should get the dance you should absolutely get the dance. I think it. Uh, I think it, for lack of a better word, uh, it fits you. Definitely. Moving on. Um, <laughs> Jungbo Kakbot rewards increased. How? Like how can they increase? So Jungbo more than ninety, make it like five hundred or something for the lowest, maybe. Because literally, there's an achievement for earning MGP from the Jumbo, and unless you actually win the Jumbo, that achievement is fucking useless. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, so it's probably just going to be upping the minimum. I don't know if the maximum is going to go up because you don't, what do you need over a million MGP for? Other unless you want to buy the cloud card and Fenrir. Yeah. So I don't know. I uh, don't want Fenrir. I just want my Adamantoys. I do. I, I could get, I could buy two Adamantoises right now. I don't want that shit. Uh, we got gate MGP rewards going up. The challenge log being added card Woo! drops for the old cards being increased and new triple triad cards and NPCs. All changes. Awesome. And that wrapped up the first half of the live letter. Um, when they came back from the break, they were talking about... They, they had brought the item lead guy on. Which, by the way... Guys, when somebody comes on from a team, don't ask them what the team does when the team very clearly has a name. The first question was, what does the item team do? You know how the guy replied? We make and adjust items. No shit, that's what they do. <laughs> uh, no, we just chill and... Um, play Triple Triad. Just play Triple Triad and... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's I was all. like, seriously? Why is this the first fucking question? Please tell me that Yoshi P just did that as a formality and that they didn't actually pull that as a question. 
I mean, I think they wanted to go like whoever asked the question wanted them to go into more detail. Yes, we get that. It's kind of it's kind of a literal thing. What what do we do? Says it right there, right beneath them. Or you know, they've already said it. But like, what exactly goes into I like creating items? I think they wanted them to go into more detail than that. Well, luckily they did a little bit. This is how we found out the heavy hatchling thing that we spoke yeah. about earlier. He'll smell the food. Uh, but this they they also took the time to show off new primal minions. This had me dying of laughter. They showed off an ifrit minion and a titan minion. Where Ruda at? That's not what's funny. They look better than the fucking Aggies do. <laughs> so all the summoners are like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like, I get that that's not a full-sized Ifrit, but it looks better than this fucking thing I got right next to me. <laughs> oh, I thought it was so funny. And then everyone's, of course, where's the Aggie glamour system that they said they were working on and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Oh, man. And the thing is, it's like, First of all, I think we're only. I think they say in the official notes we're only getting the Ifrit minion at first. I'd have to. I'd have to double. Well, I have it to check, so I don't know why I don't. Uh, yeah. So, do you have any plans to introduce primal minions? Yes. We'll start by adding an Ifrit minion in three point one. So it's only one minion, but it's still, it's still funny that it looks. To me, I agree. I think it looks better than the Aggies do. In all honesty, because they actually look like their primal counterparts. The thing is, for me, even when did you see you saw the Reddit thing? We spoke about it last week. The person who did the molding, like the the moldings of them, those mm -hmm. looked better than <laughs> than the real eggies. The moldings looked more impressive. Oh man, I just I just think it's funny that of all the things they had to reveal, a primal minion definitely hits home for a lot of people. Yeah, it did. They showed off a new Gaelic hat hat or a Gala hat, as you want to call it, where you can put the Gaelic hat minion on the Gaelic cat hat. While you're being a Makote and you got triple catception. But what what what's really funny was what Yoshi P said. It's kind of dis it's kind of like a disgusting kind of cute. Like really? Yeah, because you, it looks like you're just wearing the head of an animal. <laughs> Granted, not like that stopped us before. We have gear that looks like chimeras and shit, but that was at least made bear, of metal. Bear heads and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Like um, twin bear heads at that. Yeah. Let's see. Uh Gold saucer, bunny ears, you know, fantastic. You can get them bent. <laughs> Their favorite minions, like... And then they actually showed off a live game of Lords of Verminion. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to go into every single rule what they showed off, but I liked it. I liked, the, I liked what I saw. It looked at least interesting to dabble in at the very least, at least for my challenge log every week. It, it's, it looked pretty decent, but I'm still split on it. Like, I don't know if I'm going to, you know... Do, 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 do. There you go. I'm just in there for the music. Fuck it. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm free low, baby. I'm just in it for the music. Uh, they talked about adding a spectator mode in 3.2. So, like, if you wanted to have if you wanted to have a free company event and you you have like the finals, people can spectate it. Here's the thing that irks me about this, and I'm and this is gonna sound so ass backwards of me. Why can't they add this for Wolf's Den? And I don't give a shit they've, about they've, Wolf's Den. They've, <laughs> they've spoken about it for Wolf's Den. They've said they would like to add it to Wolf's You have to remember a lot of the things in Lords of Verminion are literally there being tested for yeah. Wolf's Den. And if this is supposed to be timed with the same time as Wolf's Den 2 comes out, then who's to say we can also get spectator mode for Wolf's Den 2 at the same time. See, this is me uncharacteristically caring for Wolf's Den. I don't give a shit about it. I don't. But I was like, wait, why is this in Wolves Den first instead of this? Because no one fucking does Wolves Den. Except on Friday nights now. That's pretty much it. <laughs> on Friday nights, people do it. It's not the Friday night fight night. I think it's that's the name, Friday night fight night. Yeah. Friday night's all right for fighting. So we're just going to keep rhyming? No, that, that was just... All right, we're good. Uh, so they showed a match, you know, they, they, there's a tutorial mode, they showed, you know, the different minions you can play, how you move them around, all that stuff. Again, we can't go into everything. It's just the basic rules. I highly recommend you guys watch that section of the live letter, uh, whether it be on Twitch or YouTube, wherever. But it was, it was a good, it was good insight. It was nice to see a full game played out. I actually wanted Yoshi P to go up against the item lead, but they didn't do that. That would have been amazing if they had arranged that. Something at FanFest, maybe? That would be nice. That would be nice. Or it's a Verminion section in FanFest. No, there better be. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That, that's it. That's all it is. 
Uh, and then they showed, like, there's a minion hop bar that just covered a few things for, like, minions that have multiple appearances. You'll be able to select the appearance. You know, like the Raubon, the, the Green Company leaders, the Warrior of, uh, the, the Minion of Light kind of deal. Um, a lot of stuff that really we don't need to elaborate on too much. Like, there's, there's going to be achievements, what roles they have. We've covered all that before. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that kind of covered the everything for 3.1 that they spoke about. But there were two final things. And the first mm -hmm. one is by far the most talked about topic. And it's not even about 3.1. You look like you're ready for it. Uh, I thought you were about to say what it was. I was waiting. Go I, ahead. I got excited. Go ahead. Changes to material melding in patch 3.2. Mm -hmm. Can we get 3.1 before we worry about that? <laughs> No, no, they're already, they've already moved on. The dev team's moved on with, like, this shit. They're like, this shit's ready. We're waiting on Fallout 4, too. <laughs> Imagine they're in the office playing Fallout 4 that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're just like, fuck yeah, because that. Because they played the patch. F fuck Naturally, that. We, they're going to be playing Fallout we test, 4. We tested the shit out of the patch. We're playing Fallout 4. Fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, let's let's start with the, the, the basics. So, they don't like tank accessories. They don't like that tanks are literally using VIT or strength accessories and melding the opposite value. Yep. So the first thing they're doing, you can't meld main stats anywhere past the given slots on the gear. So you can't forbid and meld it. So on accessories, you get one automatic slot. That's it. Everything else can only be substats. Tanks are going to be pissed. Tanks are already kind of upset about this. Um, because it now means that, I mean, they also said to compensate, they are making all crafting gear stronger, which was a surprise to me because the left side gear, we're not able to do main, main stat melts to begin with, unless you're melding like something crazy like dexterity. Right. So that's interesting to me that crafting gear is being made more popular, but I'm sure mm -hmm. it's good for crafters though. Cause it, it gives them a market. It gives them a more desirable market which is something they've needed especially especially in heavens where they need this especially with the bullshit you have to go through to get all the items to craft a single piece well... i sly shut up i bought my piece it was annoying for the person who did it for me that i put no effort into it but it was expensive <laughs> it would have been expensive if it wasn't as wasn't so annoying to do okay but the idea is that they don't want people to feel pressured to need to shell out money for accessories in order to... Because DPS don't have to do that. DPS are just like, you know, if they need vitality, they'll do it. That's not even... That's not going to be a thing. Healers no. did it for accuracy. So, that thing is, this only affects tanks. What about the healers that are still going to be doing it for the accuracy? You know? They just only... It, it's I, think it'll, I think it'll affect them in a smaller way than it will tanks. Here's why I think that it's not going to affect healers. Why? The next change. Materia melding is being added to raid and tombstone gear. This is something I have wanted since the beginning of the game. I have still, been, even amongst that, it'll still matter. Here's the thing. That's where the... So does, does healer gear get accuracy? Or do they just say, if you want it, fucking meld it, dude. Is that going to be what it is? I think they might still add accuracy onto the 3.2 healing gear. Um, but that extra slot... So to be clear... Um, this is something that is still sort of circulating as a rumor, mm -hmm. but several translators have come to me at this point and have said, no, this is what he said. So I'm going to take it as fact. There's only one slot available for melding on Raid and Tombstone gear. You can't pentameld Raid and Tombstone gear. So you're only going to be able to add one materia to each one piece. Materia. That's, I mean, okay. So S Sorry, all you people who bought grade fours because you're going to want grade fives. I guess you better go. You better be good at gambling. You better resell that for a profit to buy grade fives because otherwise, if you bought it thinking you were going to have to do forbidden melt, it's going to be complete shit anyway because the prices are going to prices on grade fives are going to dip quite a bit after 3.1. You know how many people are going to be fucking spear binding that shit? I'm going to spear bind the if people, if other people aren't doing what I'm doing, I'm going to get rich off this shit. I think the prices will dip. I give it two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Two weeks for everybody to figure out their shit. After that, then they'll dip. So you, uh, this is a slide prediction. You have two weeks. You know, kind of get your shit together. So I think 
I think it's interesting that they're allowing it, but on a, at a, on a limited scale. This adds a new dynamic to gearing. Raid gear is now still the best alongside, even though there's 210 gear that's from free company airship stuff. Mm -hmm. Raid gear is now, depending on, I guess, what you've rolled, what rules they have, it is potentially now still the best gear available. Because it has this guaranteed slot where you could put a stat that you need. For, I, I'm just crit, 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 crit. So I got to get a lot of tier 5 crit materials, that's for damn certain. And let's be honest, that's what most people are going to do. They're just going to shove whatever stat's best for them in there. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, to get the substats they desire. All that does is that makes it so that, like, maybe sets gears that weren't, like, best in slot before, maybe, with this R. But even that, I don't think that's going to change too much. But car material. But the big complaint is that a lot of people are concerned. This is why it's been such a hot topic. People are concerned that you're not a big, you're not someone who can make a lot of money. And Sly, you being third world, you know how this feels. Um, <laughs> I'm not... <sighs> You say it yourself, Sly. Don't you dare try to say you're not third world, because you tell us you're third world. No uh, oh, bullshit, Sly. Can you? How many grade five materials could you afford with how much money you have right now? Average price on your server. No, what's the average price on your server? You don't even know what the average price of grade fives are on your server, do you? No. Oh, on my server, they're anywhere from one to two mil each. Three. Three. Okay, and all the other slots? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, I have favors, goddammit. I have favors. I have exactly. favors. Anyway, it's so moving on. Yeah. Uh, people are worried that if they don't, if they can't make money, they're fucked. Pretty much. You know what my answer to that is? Make money? No. There's a reason why free company airship gear can be spirit bound, like we were talking about before. So, so you're saying they're kind of making the market even? They're giving people a means of which to access grade five materia through effort alone and not through actual money that you have. Which gives you a reason to play the content longer, which prolongs the effectiveness of free but company. It's an option, but it's an option though. But here's the thing this keeps free company airship stuff relevant in 3.2. It does. It does. Which, which is important. I think it'll, like, the free company airship stuff will be relevant for a long time, but it. It gives you an option. You can you can make the money off the stuff you get in the in the airship um, exploratory ventures, or you know you can go the route of gear and you know go ahead and get all the material you need, whatnot. Um, I'm kind of the money whore. Do you think people are going to be left out? of raid groups because they can't afford to meld materia just that strictly that reason they cannot afford to meld materia not they i feel don't like everybody that. knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that that what that knows somebody that was what what does that somebody what does that final somebody do that could help could help okay um that's not gonna fly <laughs> Not everybody knows somebody knows somebody knows somebody. And even then, giving having them give you a one million gill materia is not gonna fly. It's, that's that's the concern is people think that this wait, is wait, gonna wait, get wait, them you say that. Raise. You say that. Sly, just because you beg for money does not mean I don't everybody's beg willing anymore. to do it. I don't even I haven't even begged what was for that? anything. What, people anymore? <laughs> Yes, you, the United Negro Dragoon Foundation did exist for a reason. I needed pots. I needed food. Fuck it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I needed shit. I needed shit. But now that I'm uh, kind of mining and you know, getting my own money, I, 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 I still don't. I, I don't. Sly, you're a streamer. You can't ever say people know somebody who knows. I could sit here and ask, how do you think I got my body piece? I got somebody to give up the red scripts. I was like, is there anybody here who wants to give up all their red scripts? I'll pay you 40 mil. And that was it. If, yeah. not, if not, I was easily paying 50 to 60 mil. No doubt. <laughs> so we have we have extra powers. We, you yeah. can't use us as an example. Okay. That, that's fair to say then. Okay. All right. That's in the past. I don't. I don't do. That's not me anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, the United Negro Dragoon Foundation still exists, but uh, it's not it, actively pursuing donations. Yeah, it, it, it's voluntary. It was always voluntary, but <laughs> just like, just like all every content in this game, if it's if it's optional, it's mandatory. It, it, yeah, yeah. Just like Malzian said, if it's optional, it's mandatory. 
according to the 14 community. Yeah. I'm just, I, I hope it doesn't come down to that, because again, this would be so, and I want to know how they're going to design bosses. Are they going to design bosses around the thought that when you get raid gear, you will put materia in it? What about I-200 gear? Uh, that, or I'm sorry, let's use I-200 gear as now as the example that can be upgraded to I-210. Would it, would it give you the materia back? Would you lose the materia? Is it not going to be equipable until it's upgraded? Like all those things now become, th like I said, this, this answered up a whole bowl of questions and worms and things. Whole bowl of worms. Yeah, it, it's a big, it's a big gill grab. It's a big change in gameplay style. I hope they do. I hope they make more interesting material along this. Like, take this opportunity. And again, LBR touched on this Sunday. Awesome podcast, by the way. Yeah. Um, that uh, they could use this opportunity to introduce more interesting material. They won't, but it's it's, it's an opportunity that they have. Oh man, it's too bad that they won't. Yeah. And on top of that, with all these changes, they say they're going to be adjusting tank we'll damage. We'll never say never. All right, Bieber. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, I had to do it. Um, I mean, you got the moves. <laughs> I'm saying 4.0. 4.0 what? New materia. Oh, you mean more interesting materia. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. I'd say that's a, that's probably a better time to actually add like a new system like that into the game. Yeah, because trying to wait until like 3.5 to do it. Really, you could you couldn't wait until 4.0. Yeah, yeah, I think 4.0 seems the most logical place to do that. And soon, soon, TM, please look forward to it. Hi, hi. And to make up for all these changes, because they expect they're going to be making adjustments to tank damage. This was interesting to me because there are players that don't actually use the materia. This is just a flat out buff to them, if that's the case. Yeah, this is only really to compensate for people that were using the pentamelded materias before. I just like the reason. It's unfair that tanks have to, are expected to do this. I just I don't know why healers are being brought up. I don't know. I, I'm I'm happy with the material changes. I think if all you do is you go and actually do the exploratory missions, you'll be fine. The prices are going to drop on top of that. So just two weeks, two weeks, just do two it. Two weeks. Shia LaBeouf it, and just do it. And you'll be okay. See? Even Sly Shia buffing. Okay. And then we just had the announcements at the end of the stream. Now, one of these hits close to home. For me. Final Fantasy XI, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, is getting its final content patch Aww. on November 11th. It will receive no more content patches after that. And a mobile version of the game... A fully functional mobile version that starts at Chains of Promethea, or will start with up to the Chains of Promethea expansion completed, will be launched. Aww. They've made no mention of they've made no mention of getting rid of the subscription fee. They've only made mention of taking it off the PlayStation to an Xbox, but still running the PC version with minor bug fixes. They're doing a signing off event or a sending off event in 14 411's grand finale. They've given us no details on it. But we are getting a goodbye event for 11 in 14. That is not the Shantoto event. Ooh. It's a new event altogether. And they say that because it's such a momentous occasion, the event is meant to replicate that, you know, big meaning for the company. So in other words, instead of being a 20-minute quest, it'll be a 30-minute quest. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's their idea of a grand scale. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this. I like I like collaboration events. We were just talking about Yokai Watch last week. Well, this was Final Fantasy XI. Yeah, yeah, this is better than Yokai Watch. I can actually get down with this. I, I did like I I like the Shantoto event. Yeah, I like my Shantoto minion, even though I don't use it a lot. I need to start using it. I hope we I hope we get her laugh. <laughs> as uh as yeah the 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 oh, oh, oh. she has an achievement in the game named after her already. So the Black yeah. Mage relic quest line. Um, it's funny though, because the, the whole point of collaboration events are to encourage people to play a Square Enix title. Mm -hmm. Their hope is that either people go and play the 11 one first and then play 14, or they play the 14 one first and then go play 11. It, they're trying to get one last yeah. hurrah of money out of the Final Fantasy 11 community and bring. So they're some... trying to, yeah, bring new players into 11 before it kind of. Or bring returning players who played it before. This, this is no doubt a way but to... But how many new players do you think Eleven's going to bring with this? No. 
None? Not a lot. Some are definitely going to go back to finish the final event. It's also, t like, the final patch for 11 is, uh, is, a, new, is a new continent, you know? <laughs> uh, a continent that they've spoken about in the story for 10 years now and never took us there. So, uh, it's oh. definitely going to bring some interest back to 11. And the other hope, I'm, it seems, is that they want people who are playing 11 that know that it's the end will try out 14 as well. That seems to be the entire point of the collaboration event overall, is to, is to crossbreed them. So, I'm, I'm excited. I want to see what kind of grand finale they have in 14 to commemorate 11. And then we can have the Yokai Watch one after that. So, so how you feel about this, Mike? How how are you feeling? Are you a little somber? A little? Not really, because I'm gonna play it on my phone in between DPS queues. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you're not gonna play Grandmasters on your phone in between? Grandmasters isn't Final Fantasy XI. Fuck that, yo. I'll play Final Fantasy XI on Blue Stacks while I'm waiting on my DPS queues in patch whatever it is, like 3.4 at the time. Really? Somebody has to go AFK. We're in the middle of raiding Savage. Somebody goes AFK. I'm like, all right, fuck it. Camp and leap and Lizzie. <laughs> Oh, man. That's great. That is fantastic. And then they just did a bunch of announcements. They showed us they got Snuggies available. Snuggies! That fat Chocobo Snuggie, though. They got the Chocobo and the Moogle Snuggies. They had new, new albums, new art books, um, new XL Moogle plushies, and uh, a quick thank you for sticking with the game for uh, patch until patch 3.1 comes by. Overall, solid live letter. Any 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 real final thoughts or anything that you have regarding this live letter? Anything you would have liked to have seen? Anything you were happy we found out? Anything along those lines? I'm happy we found out more about the exploratory voyages. Um, definitely. Uh, could I mean, Lords of Romanian is a thing. I'm not gonna say we could have done without it because it's a thing. It's going to be in this patch. Um not really gonna go too heavily into it you know since it, it's optional it's a thing you can do uh but i mean it was a solid it's a solid live litter we got a few questions answered and a few lingering questions so you know it it, it brought up the hype level for the patch and can't wait i can't wait either two weeks to the day from the this live this live airing if, it feels like we would never we've we would never be able to say that. Oh, three point one guys, only two weeks away. Everyone's like, ha, got me, got me there. Got uh, him, got him. Uh, I I just want to know more about this material system. I want to see how this material system. We'll find out next live letter. <laughs> well, honestly, no. I think we'll find out what the new relic weapons look like in the next live letter. I also want to I see how much grade five material I can get in exploratory missions. What? You'll be, you'll be saving up. You're damn right I will be. <laughs> Your retainers will be filled. I'm going to have my retainers filled to the brim. If I get a drop that's like Black Mage, that's the thing. Now I want one of every roll because if I can get a Black Mage drop, I don't want to trade that shit in. I want to get all my Black Mage and fucking Spirit Bomb the shit out of that. Spirit Bomb potions, you mine. I've got, I need all the Grand Company seals Didn't now. I say this a few weeks ago? <laughs> Spirit Bomb potions serve a purpose. Now they do been serving a purpose nah oh <laughs> nah <laughs> all right sly i think it's about time we wrapped up this show what do you say wait 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 i just want to i just want to make you aware of something that we actually got through everything we did get through everything Woo! we did it yes. about a little bit over a two hour show to do it but we did it we did an, it. an hour shorter than the actual live letter yeah <laughs> oh man I'm proud of us. Yes, I'm proud of you too. High five. Me? Not proud of yourself? Well, proud of us. We're a unit. <laughs> Look, Mel's already rearing up right now. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead. Um, you know, Mike, where, they, where can they find you? No, no, no. Sly, they got to do you first. Look, oh. they, they want to know. Where oh, no, that's, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay. They want Sly, just look into the camera and tell them where they can find you. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Sly aka Gray Fox. You can find me on Instagram at Sly aka Gray Fox 07. You can find me on Twitter at Sly the Fox. You can find me on Behemoth Plot 14 Word 5 of the Lavender Beds home to the foxhole. And Mike, where can they find you? Uh, they can find me 
at Mr. Happy One Two Two Seven on uh, everything, pretty much Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, Facebook, Twitch, and then Xanart One Two Two Seven on. <laughs> on <laughs> I guess you caught up with stream. I, 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 I had it pulled up. Like it's been pulled up on my TV the whole entire time. Okay, yeah, we didn't have the dance, so I need to do one thing or the other. Um, so, and then you got on YouTube Xanart One Two Two Seven. But honestly, if you search Mr. Happy One Two Two Seven, you'll find me there as well. Is that hat in the cash shop? <laughs> That is the greatest. False advertisement. It's not the foxhole anymore. What's that mean? Is, is it is it because you made it into the script club? Not yet. I still got to make it into the script club. Ain't no wrong going to the script club. I would say he want me in the script club. I like ain't no wrong going to the script club. Ain't no sin going to the script club. All right. Glad you got that out of the way. Well, everyone, we're going to go over to Post Show, hang out for a little bit. I got a raid in a little bit, and I want to eat something before that raid. So we're going to hang out for about 15, 20 minutes. And then we'll wrap it up, and I'll get this on YouTube and uh, iTunes tomorrow. Thank you, everyone, for coming by the show. Be sure to hang out for Post Show for the next little bit. And we will see you all next week with only one week left till 3.1. Week. Next week's episode, no idea what we're talking about yet, but we'll figure it out. We oh, oh, actually, you know what? I have two things I want to do at the end of the show real quick. Oh, shit. I put it at the end of the notes, and I almost forgot. See, um, now you're pulling a mail. I don't even know about this shit. What the hell, Mike? No, okay, okay. So first of all, I want to say, Sly, I don't know if you know about this, but... I can't say too much, but on November 10th, there's going to be a special stream for Final Fantasy XIV for 3.1. I can't say much more else. Can't say much more else, really, Happy. But um, can't say much more, but there will be giveaways. There will be 3.1 stuff. I'm just telling you and everyone else to be there. And then, of course, we have State of the Realm on the same day. Yep. So it's going to be pretty exciting. Yep. On top of that, I want to end this show on a more... Uh, sentimental note. Um, Sly, I, I know you've already read the end of the show notes, so you already know mm-hmm. what this is about. Yeah. I'm sure some of you have seen the post on Reddit. I have it up here right now, but uh, a, as they call, warrior of light, a player of the game, has recently passed away. There's a, a whole huge article about it on the front page of Reddit, and I figured it would be respectable to do a moment of silence for this person right here at the end. Uh, the character name, uh, Mayo Kaneko, otherwise known as Lelodone, has uh, has, uh, passed away, unfortunately, and uh, their free company members wrote some kind words about them. I just think we can do a little moment of silence here at the end of the show before we go into post-show. So everyone, as I take us over into post-show, quick moment of silence, and uh, we'll wrap things up. So. Okay, our prayers go out to you, Mayo, Kaneko, your family, uh, you know, your friends. You seem to have touched a lot of people, so we're sorry to have lost you in the community right here. Uh, on the ferry server, yes, thank you for pointing that out. I'll be sure to post that in the, uh, in the description of the video on YouTube as well as in the chat right now. So thank you, everyone, for joining us this week. We will see you next week. See you and next until week. then, take care. Okay.